Wow, I just completed 4,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. I built the entire solar system, got unlimited choker boxes, and so much more. So to celebrate, I've compiled the last 1,000 days of footage into one mind-blowing movie. Witness my builds evolve, and my ideas get crazier and crazier. But before diving in, catch up on my 1,000 days and 3,000 days movies by clicking here. Now grab your popcorn and prepare for an unforgettable hardcore Minecraft adventure. I've just spent 20 hours mining these obsidian pillars so I can transform my boring end dimension into the entire solar system. And the solar system doesn't really have an end island, so we're gonna have to get rid of it. Wait a second, we have a problem. When we finish the transformation, we won't be able to spawn the dragon because the portal will be inside the sun. And if we spawn the dragon, it will absolutely demolish the sun. I think I have a solution. We need to kill 50 ghasts. Our first victim. Wait a second, it's probably smarter if we use our looting three sword. Uh, yeah. Oh my god! Alright, and then we can use these to make a bunch of end crystals. So we're gonna kill the ender dragon another 15 times to unlock all 20 gateways. Here we go! Wait, what? No! No! Oh... My god. This video is sponsored by Honkai Impact 3rd, the next-gen 3D cross-platform anime action game available on iOS, Android, PC, Steam, and Epic. Experience a world of stunning 3D effects and captivating stories. With a range of gameplay modes from mini-games to open-world exploration, the next chapter in Honkai Impact 3rd is almost here. Our girl's story continues with the new Nagazora update. But that's not all. Meet the new Valkyrie Quicksand. With her stunning dance moves, she's embarking on a fantastic fantastical adventure and join the fun with two events. The Meowtown Escapade event is loaded with adorable kittens and earn Shixel emblems to exchange for crystals, fragments and more. Get ready to dress to impress with two new outfits. Her sure of human, Ego's peachy spring outfit features a beautiful oriental flair, while her sure of sentiences turn up the music outfit is pure rock and roll. And as a special bonus, download Honkai Impact 3rd now and use the redemption code NEW chat to get 30 crystals, 2,888 asteroids, and one character trial card for free. Once again, thanks to Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring this video, and make sure you don't miss out on the Honkai Impact story by downloading the game with the link below. I have wasted 20 hours. And there's dragon number one. Now time to kill him 14 more times. Um, I think I've broken the game. I placed them when the dragon was still alive and now they're not doing anything. I guess I just shoot them. Well, that is, <laughs> that was very clever. And great. We have run out of end crystals and we have five more portals to get. Looks like some ghasts are about to die. <laughs> And with that, we have all 20 portals. Okay, so now because of my tiny brain, we need to mine all these obsidian pillars again. <sighs> oh my god, I've just realized something. We could have used a beacon for all of this time. That's gonna make it so much faster. I have such a tiny brain today. And there we go, haste two. This is so much faster. And bang. That is all the obsidian pillars removed for the second time. I'm actually such an idiot. That took so long. Anyways, the next step of the plan is Operation Delete Island. Literally everything has to go. So, of course, we'll start with this stuff. Actually, we should probably leave the beacon. And we should probably move this 40,000 obsidian. Get rid of this stuff. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the sand duper. Maybe we could turn it into some kind of asteroid. But what I am sure of is this Enderman farm needs to go. So I'll say the magic words. Subscribe to Lockdown Life and... Bang! Wait, 
I can't believe that actually worked. All right, and the last thing we need to get rid of is just this 1 million end stone. We obviously can't just mine this by hand, right? Yeah, we actually can't. So my plan is to build a bunch of TNT machines and make them do my work for me whilst I relax somewhere and read your comments. But before we can do that, we actually need to build the machines. So let's get collecting. The first thing we need is a bunch of slime. That is the wrong hole. Ah, uh, here we are. Perfect. Next, some redstone, a bunch of observers, a sprinkle of TNT, and finally, some coral fans. Yeah, not gonna lie, these were surprisingly hard to find. So I'm gonna collect loads of them. Alright, so I've just done the math and it turns out we need a bunch more slime. So I'm just gonna collect up the rest of the materials whilst the slime farm does its thing. Alright, perfect. That is everything we're gonna need. Okay, now it's actually time to start Operation Delete Island. But before we can just sit back and relax and use our TNT machine workers, we need to trim this island because right now it's a bit of a weird shape. And the TNT machines are just gonna go along in lines. So I think it would be better if we had more of a square shape. Um, hello? Oh my god, get combo. Alright, so first let's get rid of these weird floaty bits. The little random floating bits have been destroyed. Now, I think we'll use some good old fashioned TNT Bruce Force action to trim the rest of the end island. Yeah, you see this bit that kind of sticks out? That has to go. So I think we'll draw a line about here. All right, now everything that side is getting destroyed. Are you guys actually kidding me? That is a lot of angry endermen. Yeah, we're going to need to do that a lot more. This time I might try some pillars of TNT. Oh, we dug too far. So now it's time to build the machines. Hmm, we need to make sure these things are not in the way. I think this looks good. So... Alright, that's the machine built. We just need to prime the TNT. And then we click this. Ah! What the? Hell? Alright, it looks like the machine's working, which is good. And it should stop. Nice. Now we need to place our second TNT here. And now for the moment of truth, is this actually going to work? Let's go! Oh, that's going to make things so much faster. I'm going to let it run for about 10 minutes and see how it does. All right, let's see. Oh my God, wow. If that's what one machine can do in 10 minutes, imagine what 30 could do in an hour. All right, so let's turn this thing off for now. Did an enderman actually just knock me off? First, we need to lay out a perimeter so the TNT machines can cover the entire island. So... All right, and now the same for the other side. Subscribe to Lockdown Life. Perfect. And now I need to use my massive brain to figure out how far apart these TNT machines need to be to each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 46, 46 135, 136, 136, 180 divided by 30. That is six. So that means the TNT machines need to be six blocks apart. And we're going to build 30 of them. All right, so first, let's build all of the the return stations and straight away we've got a problem these things are gonna be in the way this is gonna be so annoying because if we can't do this this is all gonna be up really high and the rest will be broken doing this by hand or manually with tnt will just take so much more extra time as well but after some time of thinking i might have come up with a solution what if we do the impossible and break the bedrock all we really need for this is some pistons some levers some trap doors and some tnt yeah as you can see from the broken portal block this is definitely my first try come on please let it work this is how you meant to do it what? And it didn't even break. Yes, we finally broke one piece of bedrock. Now let's try and do it for all the other ones that are going to be in the way of our machines. <sighs> Ow. And the last piece of bedrock. Yes, perfect. That is the first end portal gateway completely destroyed. And now I'm just going to go along and destroy all the other ones which are in the way of our TNT machine. Wait, pause the transition. There is another problem. 
I've checked and pretty much all of these portal gateways are in the way of our TNT machines. So instead of literally breaking all that bedrock and destroying the portal blocks as well, we're just going to lower this by a couple of blocks and then mine the extra blocks from the end stone so that way the TNT doesn't blow up the TNT machines. So let's make sure we got haste too and let's just clear as many of these blocks on this level as possible. All right, nice. Now we just need to test how much we have to lower this by. All right, and that all depends if this machine can go under this. Is it gonna work? Oh, nope, it is not gonna work. We need to lower it one more time. So it looks like we're gonna have to mine this entire layer. All right, nice. Now I'm gonna lower these and then blow up these random pieces of bedrock. So resume the transition. All right, now the TNT machine should be easily able to go under there. So before we can destroy the entire island, the last step is to build 30 of these TNT machines. This is gonna be fun. Perfect, we now have all the flying machines complete. The only thing I'm worried about is the lag because this is what my PC sounded like with only one machine running. Yeah, we might be in trouble. And we've put the levers in the wrong place, great. Perfect, now we just need to prime the TNT. Wow, that looks so cool. Now we just need to add the TNT to this side. And now all we have to do is turn the machines on. Is it going to break my PC? Oh my god, no. We forgot to cover up the portal. Oh no, it is literally destroying our beacon. And for some reason, all of these flying machines have broke. Oh, this is going to be so annoying. All right, we've managed to fix them all, but we have another problem. The portal is higher than the rest of the endstone blocks, which means the three flying machines there blow themselves up when they go over it. So to fix this, we need to break all the bedrock. Just cover this up so we don't fall through. And let's get to work. And we accidentally blew ourselves through the bar. Wow, we've actually got so much better than that. Now if we just remove the obsidian, and we have a completely bedrockless portal, which TNT can't rest on, meaning these machines won't be able to destroy themselves. All right, now I think it's finally time to turn on these machines and complete Operation Delete Island. And whilst the machine's destroying the entire end island, I'm going to be reading some of your comments and sitting outside. It wouldn't be a lockdown live vid if he didn't kill a horse. I like Raman says he is so close to 1 million, I think he deserves it. Well, thank you very much. And you guys can help by clicking subscribe. Wow, those were some really nice comments. I really hope I get another one of those. Ah, Aiden Gilbert says L, 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 L. All right, it's been a couple of hours. Let's see what it's done. Oh my God, it's literally destroyed so much of the island. All right, so to finish up the remaining 5% of blocks, we're going to need a beacon. But not just any old beacon, a void beacon. Yeah, it's a, it's a beacon in the void. Okay, so my plan is to start at the top of these bits and just work our way down. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a bit harder than I thought. Goodbye, endstone blocks. Yeah, I think one of my favorite things to do in this video is just to drop Enderman into the void. So satisfying. So this process of clearing out the remaining endstone actually took quite a while and made me realize we had a very big problem. And as you can see, guys, Operation Delete Island has been completed. But like I said, we have a very big problem. This video was meant to be completed tonight and we still have to build the entire solar system. So we really need to start picking up the pace. The next step is to map out where all the planets are gonna go. So for this, we're gonna need a bunch of dirt. And we'll probably grab some netherrack too. Okay, now we should probably build something around the portal. The only problem is this might be a bit tricky. We need to go exactly through the middle. Yes, perfect. Actually, how are we gonna do the edges? Perfect. So this is going to be the very center of our solar system. And now I need to work out how far away the planets are going to be and how big they're all going to be. So whilst I use my massive brain to do that. 
All right, this might not make much sense to you guys, but that's okay because I think I know what I'm doing. We've got it all planned out now. Now we just need to get the materials and actually build the entire solar system. So one of the main materials we're gonna be using is concrete, which means we need a bunch of dyes. Nice. So that's all the magenta dye we'll ever need. Yeah, this farm's pretty annoying because it only does one type of flower. For the rest of them, I guess we'll just collect manually. Scary. All right, and now with this dye, we can make all the different colored concrete. All right, now we can come down here and use our concrete. Oh, wait. We destroyed all of it with our TNT jeepers. Yeah, we need to rebuild this. Chests, hoppers, and I think it goes something like this. Okay, there it is. Kind of feel like it's not going to fit in with this build. Hmm, I don't really know what to do about that. What do you think, Mr. Enderman? Wait, that could actually work. All we need is a couple more blocks and some lime green stained glass. And bang, we have a flying UFO to completely house the sand duper. All right, let me show you how this works. All right, so first we load up all the concrete powder that we want to duplicate. Then we just flip these levers to turn the machine on and make sure our chunk loader is working. Now, if we jump through here, all the concrete is being duplicated and sorted into these chests. Oh, this is actually working so much better than I thought it would. Whenever I build something, it always goes wrong. Anyways, the process isn't over. Now we can take this stuff, and whilst we're getting more concrete powder, we can come down here and convert the concrete powder into concrete. This way, I'm using my massive brain to get concrete and concrete powder at the same time. And we're going to use this method to get all the materials to build the Earth, which is the first planet we're going to build. Okay, I think we're finally ready to start building. And how this is going to work is we're going to build a planet at each one of these stations. And then in the middle where the netherrack is, that's where the giant sun's going to be. And obviously, as you can see from this animation, everything is not going to be to scale because that would be actually impossible to do in Minecraft. And doing it this way is going to look so much cooler anyway. So, of course, we're going to start with the earth, which, of course, is going to be blue and green. But the question is, which green? Hmm. I feel like this one's more realistic, but the lime kind of looks cooler. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to have to go with this green. All right, so we're going to start at the bottom and use some white concrete to build the south pole. All right, now we're going to move up the layers and gradually fade out the snow into some ocean and also land. I think this is going to look really cool. And there we go. We have finished building the entire Earth. But that is only one planet of the eight planets in the solar system. So we need to get moving. The next planet we're building is Elon Musk's favorite planet. Yeah, that's right. We're building Mars. Mars has a very reddy orange color. So we should probably use a mixture of orange and red concrete. Hmm, actually, I think these colors are a bit too vibrant. At this point, I decided to Google the conditions on Mars, and it said that the surface is actually covered in some red dust, which gave me an idea. There isn't any red dust in Minecraft, but there is red sand. However, red sand has gravity, so we're going to have to use red sandstone, which still looks good. All right, we've got all the red sandstone. Ooh, and I've actually got a cool idea to build Mars. How about a countdown in three, two... One. And wow, that totally didn't take ages. But it's not finished. I want to add one more thing. <laughs> get in the hole. Yeah, it's definitely too small. All right, now get in the hole. Just get in the hole. <laughs> and there we go. That is Mars complete. Next up, we have the gas giants and specifically Jupiter. All right, so as you can see, Jupiter has this stripe pattern going on. And I think the color scheme of it is pretty similar to a Mesa biome. So I think we'll be using these sort of blocks to build Jupiter. All right, I think we've got everything. And because Jupiter is mainly this white color, we're going to build it entirely out of that first and then add the stripes. Tell you what, I am good at building spheres in Minecraft. And now we just say the magic words, subscribe to Lockdown Life and...
It's not working. Wait a second. You're not subscribed, are you? You have to actually subscribe for it to work. Okay, let's try that again. Subscribe to Lockdown Life. And there we go. It actually worked. That is three out of the eight planets complete. All right, now it's time to move on to the second of the gas giants, Saturn. I didn't really know this, but Saturn is actually sort of a yellow color. So I guess we'll just use yellow concrete then. All right, so I've decided because Jupiter has some stripes, we're also going to use some yellow terracotta to just make it more realistic. What do you think about that, Elon? All right, that looks quite cool, but I feel like it might be missing something. Hmm, I can't really think what it is. Ah, uh, yeah, Saturn has a ring, doesn't it? And just like that, Saturn is now complete. So that's four planets complete and four more to go. However, we're running out of time, so we need to do these planets quickly. So the next planet is Uranus. All right, and because Uranus is pale blue and it's also extremely cold, so I seems like the perfect option. So let's build Uranus. That is Uranus complete. Now onto Neptune, the furthest away planet from the sun. And looking at the pictures, Neptune is a bit darker, so I think we'll go with this blue concrete. And I'm sure you're probably bored of watching me build spears in Minecraft, so whilst I build this one, enjoy this footage of a squirrel eating a nut. Alright, and that's Neptune built. Alright, now it's time for the last two planets, and they're pretty mid-tier. So... Alright, so this is Mercury, and that planet there is Venus. So we now have all eight planets in the solar system. So all that's left to do is build a massive sun in the center. I think we're going to go for something like this as the design, because the glowstone will give it the light, and the magma blocks will give it the fiery aesthetic we're going for. So I guess let's start collecting the 14,000 blocks we need for the sun. Ooh, that actually looks way better than glowstone. After countless calculations, hundreds of decisions, and over 60 hours of work, we are finally about to finish the entire solar system in hardcore Minecraft. It looks so cool. I just had the finishing touches to do. Getting rid of the bedrock, adding more lighting, and replacing the horse Elon with Elon Husk. And then it was done. This is the Earth, or is it? You see, last episode, I built the entire solar system, and in it, I built the Earth as a sphere. But I might have been wrong. Some people seem to think the Earth is actually flat, so I'm going to build what they think it looks like. So for this, I've spent hours studying flat Earthers and what they see the Earth as, and I think I finally know how to build it. So now it's just figuring out where to actually build it. Maybe it'll help if we do this... Oh my god, we can actually see the end islands from here. So let's build it a couple hundred blocks this way. Oh, wait, we only have one rocket. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh, if I fall off, I would have been dead. Anyways, now to build one of the biggest circles you've probably ever seen in Minecraft. And we've got a massive circle. This project is going to be massive and it's going to look so cool when it's finished. And maybe it'll actually convince me to become a flat earther. But you'll have to wait till the end to see if it does. All right, so now we're going to use this carefully constructed plan to build all of the continents and all the oceans in the entire world. But there's just one massive problem with that. If we use the equation pi r squared to calculate this area, we can see that the circle will be made out of 17,672 blocks. That is a lot of blocks. Hmm, maybe this UFO will help. Because you see, it's not really a UFO. It's a sand duper that we built last episode. So if we just fly into the sun, place our colors, so blue, lime green, yellow, and white, and then turn it on, this will now give us an infinite amount of these materials. However, this will give us concrete powder which will fall so whilst the machine upstairs is generating concrete powder i'm going to be converting it into concrete all right so now we're going to build the ice wall which is actually what flat earthers believe stops us from falling off the world yeah that definitely makes sense 
All right, we've done about half of it, but I don't remember seeing these guys on the plan. So... Yeah, they're just going to respawn, so we should probably get some torches. Perfect. Now, if you didn't know, Flat Earthers think this ice wall is actually Antarctica, which means we have done one out of the seven continents. So now it's time to build these continents, which is going to be very cool, but also very hard. Like as in, I literally have no idea where to start. Okay, we're going to go for South America first, and I think we're going to use these notches to figure out where it starts. So one, two... Three. All right, and looking at the plan, I think it's about eight blocks away from this corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we have to try and map out all of South America. Then it goes up. Oh, it's so hard to see how many blocks this is. I think it's five. Then two, one, one, three, one. A little indent here. Ooh, I think that kind of looks like the shape in the picture. Now we need to somehow do all of the other continents. Can you guys just move, please? Right, next we're going to do North America, which is actually close to the center of Flat Earth. Okay, so we've got these little scrappy bits here, which I don't really know what they are. Then I think North America literally starts here. Ow! Anyways, it's North America time. Okay, and that weird looking thing is actually all of North America. However, when I was building it, I realized we have a little bit of a problem. There is no land connecting North America to South America. It just seems to stop here. So let's add a couple of blocks in to act as the Caribbean countries that link these two continents. I don't know if you can see, but there's a very angry Enderman in North America. <laughs> oh my god, that actually jump scared me. Bye. Okay, now let's build the North Pole, which is actually in the center of the flat earth. All right, nice. And now let's move on to the final three continents. Asia. Africa. And Australia. Wait, how did I forget to mention Europe? It's literally where I am. Anyways, we should probably fill them in. Nice. Oh my God, the Endermen are literally taking over the world. What do you want? <laughs> Just making them all kill themselves. Oh. And goodbye, Enderman. But actually, that's now created a bit of a problem because these torches don't look very good. And I'm pretty sure flat earthers don't think there's giant torches everywhere. Well, actually, to be honest, they might. Anyways, I think I have a genius plan to stop the Enderman spawning in the ocean. All we need is some of this stuff. Then if we do something like this, this, and this with a little bit more water... We can make the entire ocean enderman proof without even having to use any torches. Wait, they might be able to grab the blocks and mess up the build. Yeah, we should probably do water at the same time. And about one hour later, we finished the entire ocean. Oh my god, it actually looks so cool. But before we move on to phase two of the flat earth plan, we need to make this a bit more realistic. And the first step... Oh. And the first step to do that is finding a way to remove these torches. We could try using lanterns or even frog lights, but they'll still look just as bad. Wait a second. What about a texture pack? All right, let's hope this works. Ooh. Oh my God. Yes, it's nice and bright and you can't see the torches. That is perfect. Next, we're going to add the smaller countries that we forgot to add. First up is Madagascar, which is just off the coast of Africa. Oh my God. My torches are literally invisible on my hotbar as well. There's Madagascar. Next up is what I think is New Zealand and it's right here next to Australia. And there's New Zealand. And how could I forget about this one? Next up is the UK, which is actually where I live. We'll also do two squares for Ireland. And now let's just quickly go through our map and make sure we've got all the countries. Here's the Caribbean islands. Oh, and I think these islands actually might be the Philippines. Wait a second. So this isn't New Zealand. That's Papua New Guinea. And New Zealand is like somewhere over here. And there we go. That is pretty much every country big enough to be represented on this model. Oh, wait, I forgot to light up New Zealand and there's just Enderman chilling there. Sorry, guys. Okay, so this is looking pretty good, but I think we can make it better. And to do this, we're going to need some more resources. We're going to build some cool things like a ship and some other awesome landmarks to make this a bit more realistic. And to do this, we're going to need some more resources. Okay, so for our ship, we're going to need some spruce wood. And now we need some wool for the sails. So... Now I'm thinking we build the ship somewhere over here. 
Alright, and now we're gonna do the sail. And there's our ship. Now we're gonna build some of the most famous landmarks in the entire world. And first up is the Eiffel Tower. So for this, we're gonna need one iron bar and probably about one tree's worth of wood. Eh, we'll get two just in case. Actually, we'll probably get spruce wood instead. All right, I'm pretty sure this is France. So, oh, there is a torch there. Then a fence on here, some signs and... Perfect. We have an Eiffel Tower. I'm going to make all the landmarks really small like this. Otherwise, the scale is going to look ridiculous. I mean, the Eiffel Tower is already taking up all of France. The next landmark we're going to do is the Great Wall of China. And some people actually say you can see it from space. Wait. All right. I think this is China. And there we have it, the Great Wall of China. All right, next, we're going to build the Pyramids of Giza. So all we need is some sandstone, and then we can use this to craft up some stairs. There, we have the Pyramids of Giza. Now I'm thinking, let's speed this up a bit. Next, I built the Sydney Opera House, and I did this quite easily by using quartz stairs. I'm not too sure it looked like the real thing, though. Anyways, next was the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and once again, it was a bit of an awful recreation, as I used these diorite walls. And then for the penultimate landmark, I decided to build Brazil's Christ the Redeemer statue. And you may be wondering how I'm going to build such detailed architecture on such a small scale. I'm just going to use a armor stand. And now for the final landmark, Mount Rushmore. Wait a second, we don't have any heads. Well, that's going to be a problem. All the other landmarks are looking perfect and exactly like their real life counterparts. But this one just looks nothing like it. It doesn't even have heads. I was going to use my channeling trident to get a supercharged creeper and get a head that way, but I can't seem to find it. The only other way I can think of getting heads is by killing wither skeletons. Wait, oh my god, I'm such an idiot. We have a wither skeleton farm. And just like that, we have all seven landmarks built. This place is looking pretty cool now, but I think we need to add something to make it feel more alive. The first thing I want to add is some fish in the ocean. So let's grab ourselves 60 buckets, fill them all up with water, and now let's collect all the fish we can find. Ooh, these are cool fish. I really wish these guys could go in a bucket. Nemo! These ones are so cool. Let me know your favorite tropical fish in the comments down below. And now let's release them into their new home. Okay, I'm liking this. It actually adds a lot to the ocean. Also, we can add some salmon into the lakes and rivers. Feel like it's still missing something though. I want to bring some frogs to the flat earth. Come on, frogs, make tadpoles. Now let's grab a bunch of these guys. And once these guys grow up, we're going to have a bunch of frogs. Now there's only one more mob I want to get on the flat earth. And that one mob is the most impactful mob on the entire disc. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking about people or in Minecraft's case, villagers. All right. Now, how are we going to get these guys into to the end. I guess we could just use boats. Nice. Now we need to find a way to get this boat up that hill. Could try using pistons. Will this work underwater? Wait, what? Huh? Where's the villager gone? Wait, how? How did he get up there? Come back. No, 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 no. Don't go down. No. Stay. Okay. At least he's out of the water. This should be easier. Okay, and then. Nice. We finally reached the top of the hill. And now to do that one more time. Okay, now it should be pretty simple to drop these guys down into the end. Now this is the difficult part. Nice. And if we just... Oh, right. Let's try that again with this guy. We. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> no. Well, that's definitely... Could this get any worse? All right, we can do this. Nice. Then if we just break these and that, how are we? Come on. No. All right, let's try that again. Maybe we need to break the boat. No, no. Let's go. Stay. Don't, don't go anywhere. Right, one in there and one in there, please. Now we just need to build a railway to transport these two villagers from the UFO to the flat earth. And now we just need to do the tracks. Ow. Okay, let's test it out. And... Yes! And the next one. And... Yes! Let's go, it's actually working! 
And there we go. We now have villagers on the flat earth. So we have the landmarks, we have the animals, and we also now have the people. Maybe the earth could actually be flat. The only way to know for sure is to move on to phase two of our plan. You see, during my research of flat earthers, I discovered that they think the sun and the moon move around the earth. So we now have to find a way to show this on our model. Hmm. Maybe we'll start with the sun. So I think we use the same blocks that we used for the sun in our last episode. So magma blocks and shroom lights. All right, I think we've got everything. Now, as far as I can tell, flat earthers don't think the sun and the moon are flat. But judging from these diagrams, they seem to think the sun is very, very small. Meaning we won't have to build a massive sun like this, but we do have to find the right place for it. So I spent the next 10 minutes searching around and trying to find the best location for the sun. I used all the diagrams I could find of the flat earth theory and eventually I think I have it all planned out. So let's build a tiny sun. Ow. Ow. I keep burning myself on this stuff and I think there's an enchantment you could get for your boots. I'll try it with some diamond boots. No. No. Ah uh, great. Apparently you can't even get it from an enchanting table. And I guess we're doing this now. Oh my god. We got it first try. Can someone please like calculate the odds on that? Anyway. Let's go! They actually work! Wow, this looks so cool already. Imagine how much cooler it's going to look with the moon as well. Oh, and speaking of the moon, many flat earthers believe we never even went to it. So I think before we build it, it's important to understand how the moon landing might have actually been faked. And for this, we're going to need some of these, a couple of these, and a bunch of other stuff. Now we need to find somewhere to build it, and it has to be top secret. This is pretty secure. How about down here? And then over here? And if you haven't guessed already, I'm building the TV studio where apparently the moon landing was faked. Okay, so this is where like the top secret government officials might have sat. Then we'll add some redstone torches to make it seem top secret. At the front, we'll add a green screen. Ooh, and we can use the invisible torches to light it up. And last but not least, let's add a camera. That is the wrong way around. And just like that, we have our secret TV studio. Let's see if it actually works. One small step for man, one giant leap for lockdown life kind. So now that we know how the moon landing was faked, it's time to build the moon. And the moon's going to be slightly smaller than the sun, so we can start building it here. Now, what blocks should we use to build the moon? My heart is telling me cheese, but Google is telling me rock and 10% iron. And sadly, there's no cheese in Minecraft, so we'll have to go with Google's suggestion. And there's the moon. I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty dull moon. Let's add a couple invisible torches. That's much better. Wait, I think I've got a better idea. If we get rid of the torches on this side and put more torches on this side, it kind of looks like the sun is reflecting onto the moon. Wow, that's looking so cool. But it's gonna look even cooler after phase three. A massive dome that protects us from everything outside of our atmosphere. You may be like this frog and think that that's stupid, Bruh. but it kind of makes sense. I mean, why else would the horizon appear to curve from a plane? So to get our final opinion on whether the Earth is flat or not, we need to build this massive dome. The only problem is it requires 20,000 blocks of glass. I don't have 20,000 blocks of glass. So I guess let's grab ourselves a shovel, head to a desert, and now let's mine a strange amount of sand. 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 11, 12. And that is all the sand we are gonna need. Yeah, I don't even need this anymore. Thank God for this machine. So now we're getting about 12 sand per second. And we are definitely not smelting it at 12 sand per second. Looks like we need a super smelter. All right, let's try it out. So coal in this chest, sand in here, and... It's working, so that's good. We only seem to be getting about three glass per second. Okay, so we're now getting glass at the same rate we're getting sand. The only problem now is this doesn't really fit in with the solar system. 
Now, whilst these machines are getting us thousands of glass, I'm gonna go check on the flat earth. Look at these mobs. Everyone's happy and having a good time. And these landmarks look completely natural. And the sun and the moon just make perfect sense. Maybe the earth really is flat. So whilst I was building the giant dome, I did some serious thinking. And I think I finally came up with a conclusion. After hours of research, planning, and building, I have finally made up my mind. The earth is flat. One million emeralds. That is the goal, but we currently have two. So we're going to use loads of different methods to become Minecraft's richest player and get to one million emeralds. The first method is very simple. All we need to do is chop some trees, then craft this wood into sticks and come to a village of prison and trade them with these guys for lots of juicy emeralds. And just like that, we've got nine emeralds already. So for the next 30 minutes, I continued working hard, chopping down trees for wood, turning that wood into sticks and then trading them sticks for a juicy emerald profit until I got a very strange message from my friend Gamers. You see, Gamers had heard that I was trying to get to 1 million emeralds and he thought it would be a good idea to make it even harder for me because the message said, if you don't get a million emeralds in five days, then I'm gonna leak your face reveal. Lol. Okay, I'm not really sure if he's joking or not, but we should probably move on to the next method because otherwise there's no way we're getting to a million emeralds in five days. After this next method, we need to make sure we've got fortune three on our axe. All right, so for this method, we're going to make use of the resources we've got available. Also known as the fact that we have the world's largest carrot farm. This is where Fortune 3 comes in. We'll collect as many carrots as we can carry. Then we come down here and we can trade all the carrots for a bunch of emeralds. Nice, we're now at 397 emeralds. Let's repeat that a few more times. Let's see how much higher we can get. Wow, 1,552 emeralds. That is quite a lot of emeralds, but it's less than 1% of a million emeralds. So I think I've got a way to speed this up. Instead of bringing the carrots to the villagers, how about we bring the villagers to the carrots? This is going to be difficult. So if we put a boat there and there, then we need to let two out of here. Get in the boat. You always want to escape. Hmm. Yes, we've got one. And if we throw some carrots there, there's villager number two. Now I guess we just clear this like so, and the villagers are free. Oh, no, we probably should have waited till morning. Yeah, this is a bit safer. Okay, now we've got these two guys here. I'm gonna put them in a hole with some beds and feed them a bunch of carrots. Wait, oh, hi, how did this happen? Um, get out. Oh, now the floor is gonna look weird. So beautiful. Anyways, now it's time to upgrade the breeding hole. Okay, wow, this hole is looking so much better. This is going to be so useful to get emeralds. Speaking of which... Um, did I just hear a trident? Ow! Mine. Is that actually another trident guy? One shulker of emeralds. Wait, let me do some math. So one shulker has 1,728 emeralds. So if we divide a million by 1,728, we can see that we need another 577 shulker boxes of emeralds. We've definitely got to find a fast way to do it. Otherwise, my face is getting leaked. Wait, I think I've got an idea. So right now, this is the most intensive part. I have to manually collect all these carrots by hand. But what if we could find a way to automate this? That way, I could still collect a bunch of carrots when I sleep. And then in the morning, I'd be able to trade them for a bunch of emeralds. Okay, to build this farm, we need a bunch of things. The first of which is dirt. Now, if we just steal this turtle's habitat and flick this, our UFO will generate us thousands of sand. But we need glass, so if we grab some sand and head in here and flick this, now the asteroid will get us a bunch of glass. And... Okay, let's build this farm. Perfect, now all we need to do is plant the carrots. And lastly, we need two villagers. This is gonna be so annoying. Then if we use a boat, and now we don't want a farmer. 
Yes. Perfect. And... Nice. How did that actually work? Then you should naturally run in. <laughs> in there. Go on. One more. Go. Nice. Do you mind? Okay, and now we do the same thing, but for over here. Get in the boat. No. No. I don't want to hit a villager because that guy's going to smack me. Oh. Okay. Apparently he's chill. Come on. Yes. Nice. Let's go. Now this farm should be fully operational. I'm going to wait for the carrots to fully grow and then I'm going to AFK for 30 minutes and see how many carrots we get. And... Wait, what? I'm no expert when it comes to this farm, but I'm pretty sure that's not meant to happen. All right, I think I know what happened. All right. Let's try that again. Now, this time, everything was going really well, and the farm was working perfectly. That was until it was time to check the carrot chest. Is that it? Yeah, I definitely have to find a way to fix this before I go to sleep. So that's exactly what I did. All right, it's the next morning. Let's see how many carrots we've got. One, two, three, four. Just over four and a half double chests of carrots. We could just trade them straight up for emeralds with these guys, but why not try and optimize the amount of emeralds we get? So for this, we need mushrooms, sugar, and spider eyes. Okay, I think I remember how to do this. Right, so we get some of these, water, and then just chuck these in. Perfect, and gunpowder. Nice. All right, perfect, it's nighttime. All right, now we need to be very careful. So we need to get rid of this guy. Nice. Now if we put this here. Come on, Mr. Zombie. Go on, get in. Get in. Let's go, he's in. No! Oh, god damn it. Zombie number two. It's time. Let's use the fence gate. Nice. No! Oh, quick, infect everyone. Yes. Come on. Yes, it's working. Let's go. We've got loads of zombie villagers now. I'm gonna add a roof so the sun doesn't kill them all. Ah! Oh my god, did not mean to fall in. Now we need to kill the zombie. Okay, now if I jump in here... Ow, it's quite dangerous actually. Let's go! Oh wait, no, they're burning! No, no, no! Let's go! He's the first one cured. No, don't infect him again. No, that is bad. They all need to cure at the same time. No, this is bad. No, oh, they're just all being infected again. Wait, if I just stand here, they'll only care about me. Then I'll just do it again. Nice. Ah, I think these guys need another splash. Boom! Let's go, they're all cured. Wow, look at that, 10 carrots for one emerald. So that has more than doubled our yield. That means we'll get twice as many emeralds for the same carrots. Let's get trading. I spent about an hour grinding and pushing myself closer and closer towards that 1 million emerald goal. Everything was going great, and I was converting carrots into emeralds at near maximum efficiency. Even when the auto carrot farm ran out of carrots, I just switched to the manual method whilst the farm collected carrots in the background. I felt on top of the world, and for the first time, I thought this was 1 million gold might actually be possible. But sadly, this feeling didn't last very long. Wait, that's only our second shulker box full, meaning we only have about 3,000 emeralds, which is 0.3% of a million. I don't even think this is possible. I've literally spent hours doing this. So that night, I went to bed thinking I might have to scrap this video. However, that night, I had a dream of a machine so powerful that it could make me an emerald millionaire in less than a day. It was literally the fix to all of my problems and the only possible way I'll be able to do this before the five days is over. There was just one big problem. In my dream, this machine looked insanely complicated. And luckily enough, ENXA4 has a tutorial on this exact farm. Yeah, I definitely didn't just see the farm on YouTube. Anyways, now we just need to build it. But where? I mean, this farm works, so we could build it here, but it's in the way. Hmm. Now you may be thinking such a complex machine must have a massive range of items that we're going to need to build it. Well, actually, no. It just requires these items. So let's collect them before this guy escapes to land. Luckily, there's a bunch of kelp here. All right, and I'm pretty sure we got loads of bones in here. Nice. Some hoppers, a few chests, some lava, and then a bunch of other random things. And now there's just one more thing we need, and that is ice. 
All right, perfect. And we're going to use normal ice because when we break it, it makes water. And it's a lot easier than carrying 19 water buckets. Wow, it's actually still here. Anyways, let's build this farm. We need to make sure we can't see any land. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Anyways, it all starts with this lily pad. Then we instantly destroy it with a block. And now we build a very intricate structure out of scaffolding. Oh, that's wrong. Four, five, six. But we need to be very careful to come out at certain points. Then we just keep going up. Okay, and it says this should be at Y69. Perfect. Then we go up. Oh, that's not up. Then this way again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one this way and one, two, three, four, five that way. And now it's 31 scaffolding. All right, now it's about to get interesting. So we place three of these on each side. Then like this. And now we're going to place lava. Because you see, this lava is literally going to build the farm for us. Then we just build some more scaffolding. Now we break this. And now starts our timer. We need to get down to the other one. Ow, ow. Quickly pick up the lava and place that. Perfect. And that is going to make our drop shoot. I don't know what I was worried about. Lava drops so slow. And we take that and we can just chop away all of this stuff. Right, now we need to come in here, place an invisible torch down and then pillar up to Y level 69. And now we clear this block and put a... Where's our dispensers? Oh, I'm pretty sure I put it somewhere random in the ocean. That was very stupid. How am I going to find it? <laughs> yes! <laughs> so random. Why did that burn? Oh, it's, it's the lava. Okay, so dispenser. We'll put half the armor stands in there. Then a button and get rid of this. Now it's time to make our storage system. So we need to get rid of these blocks. Okay, nice. We've got our sorting system. Now I'm just putting my trust in this tutorial and hoping this machine actually works. Okay, so we break in here, break these, block, button, dispenser facing up, armor stands in there. Then we break this and we put a cauldron and strangely a piece of string on it. And then we surround this with glass. Okay, right, now we come up here and here's where I've done something wrong. I think that's fixed. Sign there and sign there. Then water. Okay, now more water here. All right, now we do this one. Oh no, I think we messed it up. Ah, okay, never mind. We can just fix it like this. Perfect. Now we go like this. Now we replace this with water. Why is that? Why is that not water then? Hello. Okay, water. And now we build a platform in three, two, one. This is going to be like a dock for our villagers to get them in. Then we put this there, like a little corridor. And now it's time for Operation Bubble Column. Help. Oh, we forgot to place the signs. And now we just spam bone meal. And we ran out of bone meal. Okay, it stopped growing. Break that. And let's test it out. Let's go! I'm just gonna leave that kelp just dancing there. All right, and now it's time to place you guys. Get it? Because I'm placing observers and you guys are observing this video. Yeah, I'm definitely getting tired of building. Anyways, now we're gonna place four more of you guys. Then sticky pistons, composters, then some glass, some stairs, and some more glass. This is where the villagers are gonna stay. So now we're gonna build a few more of these going down this pillar. Not gonna lie, I kind of feel bad for the villagers. This is not very comfortable. Okay, so we've got our pods now. We just need the villagers. Wait, where's our ocean villager gone? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure there's no villagers in this village either because I killed them all in a raid. Oops. Yes, there's a village here. Let's get some boats. Perfect. Now we need to kidnap five villagers. Yoink. Get in. No. In the boat. Nice. Where are you going? Nice. And who's going to be the lucky last villager that gets to spend his life in a box? You will be. Sorry, guys, you missed your chance. Now you may be wondering how we're going to get this villager all the way up there. Well, it's actually built into the design of the farm. We dock the villager here. And if we break the boat... Oh, he needs to not have a job. Maybe if we break this and this. All right, yes, now it's actually working because he's trying to get to the composter. Now all we have to do is push him up. All right, and this is where it gets clever. Now we just replace this red stained glass with a composter and then we just need to push him down. Perfect. And if we break it, he should fall right into the chamber. Perfect. Now let's just do that with three more villagers. Here he comes. 
get in the hole. Get in the hole. No. Get. Nice. Yeet. Ah! I am the captain now. Nice. Help me! Help! Wait, is he alive? Let's go! He was just out of render distance. All right, and now for this final villager, we need to do something different. All right, so for this one, we're gonna push him in and then place the soul sound again. Break this. All right, now we need a composter there and like that. Okay, we've nearly finished building this farm now. And I really hope it's gonna work because we've only got two days left before gamers might leak my face reveal. So we need to hurry up and build this redstone part. I think this is right, but if I get it wrong, then it's gonna be so hard to fix. Pretty sure this is all right. Only one more redstone bit to go. Okay, the farm's nearly done. We just need to add the finishing touches. Like setting up the storage system, lighting it all up, adding ladders to get to the farm, and finally dispensing armor stands. Okay, and after a little bit more preparation, we're ready to try out this farm. We just need to get the bad omen effect. Now we come over here, go up here, and we go in here, and we just click this every 1.5 seconds. Let's put our chest plate on. Yeah, I should probably use an auto clicker for this. Because I'm going to need to do this for about 20 hours. I'm going to leave it running for about an hour and see what happens. Okay, I know I said I'd be back in an hour, but something very serious happened. I just came back into my office and I saw I was getting killed by vexes. So quickly, I tried to turn off my auto clicker and get out of there, but I must have left it on and switched my pickaxe and then I just started destroying the entire farm with an auto clicker. <sighs> I've now fixed the farm, but we need to fix the vex problem. And to do that, we need beacons. So to do this, we're gonna have to reinvest these emeralds into blocks. And now let's make ourselves a mega beacon. Um, hello? I think I actually made it too big, but it works. So first we'll get strength. That means vexes should have less time to spawn. Next we'll give ourselves resistance too, just in case. And then regeneration so we can't die of hunger. Then to be honest, I don't know why I got four because we only need three. But um, I guess jump boost. Whee! <laughs> this is pretty fun, actually. Anyways, we're running out of time because of all these setbacks. We've only got like a day and a half left. And this machine needs to be running for a full day. But wait, I've just looked at the replay and it looks like some of the emeralds are actually going straight into the fire. So to fix this, we need to expand the storage system. I mean, it's only got like 10 chests. And like I said earlier, we need 290 double chests of emeralds to get to 1 million. Yeah, we should probably chop some wood. I also think we've still got loads of hoppers in here. Perfect. And now let's build ourselves a mega sorting system. And now we finally have an epic storage system that can store 1 million emeralds. But right about now, I'm starting to get a little nervous because this farm has to work because if we don't get to a million emeralds in one more day, then gamers is gonna leak my face reveal. So I nervously went out and got the bad omen effect, made sure all my gear was equipped and finally activated the farm. The very fate of my face was relying on this farm. Would it be able to get me to a million emeralds in one day? The first hour was hard. The raid mobs were spawning on my beacon, so I had to complete completely get rid of it and put it underwater. Then I was constantly worried about going away from my PC because I was scared of being killed by vexes. I really didn't want to lose my world even for a million emeralds. But eventually I worked up the courage. And at hour three, I noticed I was actually starving to death and the beacon was keeping me alive. But the knowledge that we had already collected 150,000 emeralds kept me going. The rest of the daylight hours went by until we hit hour 14 and it was time to go to sleep. This would be the longest I had gone without checking my computer. But when I wake up, I should be at a million emeralds. All right, here we go. It's hour 20, the moment of truth. Do we have 1 million emeralds? Let's go! Oh my god, we've actually done it. 
This is AI. Wait, no, this is actually AI. And it takes whatever you write. For example, a purple rhino riding a rocket and turns it into a beautiful piece of art. So now we're going to use this AI to build something beautiful in Minecraft. The first step is to get some suggestions of what to build from you guys. So I've tweeted out asking for your favorite colors, animals, and places. And then I used a random wheel to pick a combination of the three. And this is what we came up with. A blue tiger on Tatooine, which is the planet from Star Wars. This is going to look really cool. Let's see. <laughs> this one looks really cool. If we click on it, we can get variations of this. Ooh. All right, nice. So we're going to go with this blue tiger. So now it's time for step three. This is where we're going to use a Minecraft pixel art generator to turn this image into something that can be built in Minecraft. So if we just click generate, we have the plan, but most importantly, a list of every block we're going to need, which is where step number four comes in, collecting the 10,000 blocks we're going to need for this build. Okay, looking at this list, some of them are very easy, like one spruce plank and other ones are very hard. For example, we need 1,358 blocks of gold. Uh, why did someone have to suggest a planet that's made of sand? Anyways, let's start off with the easy blocks and work our way up to the harder ones. Hmm, I'd say six oak logs is pretty easy. Now we're really up in the levels and going for 17 stripped oak logs. Oh my god, this is hard. We also need 17 oak planks. And it is done. I mean, I guess getting the rest of the wood should be pretty easy. So we need 38 of these bad boys. Perfect. Then eight normal ones, six planks. And now it's time for jungle. And spruce. Then acacia. After a long flight, we have dark oak. And that's all the woods complete. Next up is 452 snow blocks, which would be easy apart from we don't have our shovel. Maybe it's in here? Well, looks like we're gonna have to get a new one. That should do. Ah, we need silk touch. 12 emeralds. After last episode, I think we can just about afford that. And there's the one block of emeralds ticked off the list too. Now we can finally get the 452 snow. Next up, it's time to acquire some ice. And I don't mean the kind of ice that rappers wear. I'm talking about packed ice, normal ice, and blue ice. Which I have just remembered is made out of nine packed ice. I'm about to destroy a lot of ice spikes. All that destruction and we still have less than half of the amount of blue ice we need. We need to go bigger. And bang, that is all the blue ice. But we're not done role-playing climate change just yet. We need 158 powdered snow and... Yeah, so we need 158 buckets. Looks like a lot of these guys are gonna have to die. Oh no, perfect. That's good. Oh wait. Oh my god, we have to store 158 of these. We can use these spare six shulker boxes to store the snow, but I don't want to have to carry them around with us, so a normal person might say, put them in an ender chest. However, I am not a normal person. There's got to be one around here somewhere. Oh, hi dream. That is the wrong animal. <laughs> Let's go! And how do I... Wait, what? You don't even need to craft anything, you just need a chest. Oh my god. And just like that, we have somewhere to store all of our snow. This is so much better than using an ender chest. Anyway, now we're going from the cold blocks to the hot blocks. Well, the nether blocks. All right, what do we need? We need six soul soil. An absolutely massive amount of blocks from the nether fortress as well. Nice. <laughs> Lol. 21 delicious bone blocks. Oh, they sound so nice. And now 14 of these glowing stone blocks. Wait, that is the wrong pickaxe. No. What is this called again? Basalt. How does one make it smooth? Ah, like this. And I've just realized we need five more. Now it's time for something dangerous. We need all of the bastion blocks. But where is the bastion? Hello? Oh, 
There it is. Okay, I don't really know exactly what I need, so I'm just going to get everything. Ooh, our first block of gold as well. We only need like 1,357 more. Don't mind me, I'm just destroying your home because AI told me to build a blue tiger on a different planet. Oh no! Guys, we can talk about this. And by talk, I mean... Oh my god. All right, I might just fly away. All right, we just need 11 gilded blackstone, and then I think we've got everything from here. Or five? Ooh, another block. 1,356 to go. I don't know why people think these places aren't that safe. <laughs> Nine? Eleven. Perfect. And now I think it's time to speedrun the rest of the nether blocks. Cue the dream music. We now need 818 shroom lights. Yeah, we definitely need a faster way of doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the shroom light destroyer 4000. And there we go. Now for the final nether block. And it's gonna require some TNT. Do I have any? Nice. Okay, now we just place down some TNT. Wait, is that gonna light that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So we're looking for four ancient debris. Can we get it from this? There's one. Why do we even need ancient debris to build a blue tiger? Eh, whatever the AI wants. Ooh. Oh my god, there's two. Yes. Just one more to go. And that's all the nether blocks complete. Now it's about time we start dealing with one of our biggest problems. The 1,358 blocks of gold we need for this build. Luckily, I have one of the most OP gold farms in the world, so all I need to do is click this. Alright, I don't know if the farm was working properly, but let's see how much gold we got anyway. And that's it. We have just over 10% of what we need. Oh my god. I think we'll come back to that later. For now, let's gear up to go mining because there's a bunch of blocks we need, not to mention the 857 lapis blocks we need. Oh, that's going to be hard. So for lapis mining, we're going to need silk touch. And then we're also going to need mending. Turn them into netherite. We'll grindstone all the bad ones. And then everyone knows you need to spend lapis to make lapis. Ooh, add all the books and we're ready to go mining. It's not just lapis we need. We also need a bunch of other blocks. For example, three andesite, one cobblestone. Oh wait, that's andesite still. <laughs> one cobblestone and three tough. We're also probably going to get a few more, but let's get down to the mine and start looking for lapis. I think this is the best level to mine up. Ooh, our first lapis. Yes, more. It seems to be working so far. How long is this going to take, though? <laughs> yes! That's 12 now. And I did some research, and it says every Fortune 3 lapis block is going to give us about 36 lapis. But we still have so much to collect. Oh, we need regular gold ore, not mm. deep slate gold ore. Ooh, and we actually need about two polished andesite. So we should get some of this. Ooh, 11 dirt. We also need, like, 13 blocks of coal, so we should probably get this. I haven't found any lapis in ages. Oh, this is gonna take so long. Go. Okay, we're starting to get there. We're on 57 lapis blocks now. I think for the next couple of hours, I'm gonna really get my head down and start mining. And hopefully by the end, we'll have all the lapis we need. This is around 250 blocks of lapis ore. Now the question is, will using this Fortune 3 pickup get us enough lapis to make 857 blocks? Well, it's time to find out. There's our first stack. We're two stacks down and we're onto the second layer. Hmm. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough. Okay, and the final result is this. That's just over half of the amount we need. Why did the tiger have to be blue? Mining wasn't all bad though. We did manage to get four cobble deep slate, two polished diorite and andesite, four dripstone blocks, one copper ore, and after I mine this, we should have the 13 coal blocks we need. Perfect. All right, we'll make a good progress, but I think it's time to take some of the easier blocks off the list. Let's start with the desert blocks. So I'm gonna steal 10 smooth sandstone from this house. Thank you. 
Then we also need two cut sandstone. We then also need one regular sandstone. And finally, we need 433 chiseled sandstone. I guess we'll just mine loads of this. This village is going to be floating. Okay, and we'll chisel that when we get back to base. Next is the colorful blocks. We're talking concrete and terracotta. And since we're here, we'll grab a bunch of the terracotta. Is this regular? Yeah. And if we come down here to our little dye area, we should be able to craft all the terracottas. Now we need to get all the blocks of wool as well. And I've got a pretty good idea for this. We'll just dye these sheep the color of the wool that we need. So we need some black, we need some light blue, we also need a light grey, a grey, some white, some brown, and some blue. Now we just put redstone here to make the machine work, and we can just sit back, relax, and watch our wool get collected. Alright, awesome, that's all the wool. Now the last group of coloured blocks is of course concrete. So for this, if we just put blue here, light blue, black and grey, switch them all on. Now if we come through here, our UFO should generate us all the concrete powder we need. And I can turn it into concrete down here. Wow, we've just ticked off so many blocks. But let's keep this progress going by collecting some of the most random blocks we need for this build. For example, we need 263 prismarine. And I think I know just where to get it. We transformed the outside of this ocean monument, but not the inside. Perfect. Oh, this is going to be so much easier than finding a new one. Also, let me know in the comments, is prismarine blue or is it green? Next on the list is seven clay, which I think we could get from here. The next one's a little more difficult, 42 jack-o'-lanterns. So for this, we need pumpkins. Well, we need a bit more than two of them. I always remember seeing pumpkins over here. Yes! We still need more. Why is there a raid here then? Do you have pumpkins? Okay, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Ooh, we could take them pumpkins. Don't mind me, guys, I'm just taking the pumpkins. Ow. Oh my god, there's loads. What the hell? Yes, this is actually so good. All right, we only need a few more. Yes. All right, that's enough. Now, how do we make jack-o'-lanterns out of these? We need a torch and a carved pumpkin. There's torches. Then if we just... And... That is all the jack-o'-lanterns. Now we'll just get a few more things until we're on the final bosses of the blocks. Okay, it's time to collect the final boss blocks. These are the hardest blocks we're going to have to collect. And each one is going to be quite difficult in its own way. But we'll start off with the easiest one for me, which is a block of diamond. Yeah, that's how hard they're going to be. Next up, we need to fly thousands of blocks this way. I have been flying for absolutely ages and I can't even find one. But I think... Wait, we could have just got it from this pile. Oh my god. Oh, we need silk touch. To make matters worse, my elytra has barely any health, so we're gonna have to walk back. Okay, so I've been using the piglin farm to repair my elytra, and it's actually given me an idea about our next block. You see, it's crying obsidian. So if we eat into some of our gold supply, we should be able to trade with these guys for crying obsidian. The only problem is it's based all on luck. And we're not getting very lucky. We need to find some way of increasing our odds. And the best way to do this is going to be getting multiple pigs. Come on, Mr. Piglin. They are such gold diggers. Ooh, yes. More gold diggers. Let's go. Yes, we have six piglins in the hole. And that's the crying obsidian done. Now it's finally time to tackle the lapis again. And after doing some research, I've came up with a new method. And it involves this and making some of these. All right, and this should give us a water breathing potion. Yes, let's go. And we'll make it eight minutes by putting redstone in there. Combined with night vision potions, this is the perfect setup to explore underwater caves. And apparently this is the best way to find lapis. Look at this, there's two together. Oh my God, this cave's amazing. Okay, it's literally just been eight minutes and we've already found over 50 lapis. Let's see how much we can get in an hour. Yeah, that is definitely a faster way to get lapis. 
And finally, if we combine our lapis blocks that we got from earlier, we now have the 857 lapis we're gonna need. There's only two different blocks left now, and the next one is 1146 endstone. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot I built the solar system where the end island was. I guess we'll just fly this way, just past the giant flat earth model. And here we go. This island is getting destroyed. I wonder how long this is gonna take. And finally, the one I've been dreading, the 1,000 gold blocks we're going to need for this build. Yeah, I'm going to have to sit here all night. And by the morning, we had all the gold we needed. So all of the blocks have finally been collected. Now it's time to construct the AI's amazing build. But where should we put such a magnificent piece of art? This looks like a good spot. And that way, Dream will always be looking at the AI's build. So first, we'll grab some dirt. And we'll use this to build the 100 long area we need for the build. And in the process, I had to destroy this hill. Okay, it's time to start building because we've only got 10 hours to get this done and we need to place 10,000 blocks. Meaning we need to place one block every 3.5 seconds for the next 10 hours. Oh my God, this is gonna be hard. The way this is gonna work is I'm gonna build it up in rows. And luckily this pixel generator allows you to click here and it tells you all the blocks you need for each row. So with time ticking down, it's time to start the first row. Five gold and back to stream or gold. Now we're onto the random blocks at the end for some reason. Endstone, diamond, emerald, is that slime? Shroom light, purple concrete powder, and finish it off with blue concrete powder. Okay, that's the first row done. Only 9,900 more blocks to place. Oh, this is gonna look so cool at the end, but it's gonna be so hard to build. Okay, row number two. that and that's row two complete there's gotta be a faster way of doing this so after doing some thinking i realized the next 10 or so layers are mainly made out of stream lights and gold blocks so if i focus on doing the gold blocks first and then just fill in the gaps with stream lights that will probably be so much faster so now i've got all the gold blocks in my inventory and i know exactly what to do at first this method was going well it was easy and i was making good progress but then i started making mistakes getting confused about which blocks go where and completely messing up connecting the different branches. But eventually I got all the gold placed and from then on filling in the gaps with shroom lights was very easy. Hmm, to be honest, I can't really see how this is gonna look good. But I guess we've just got to trust the process and get grinding. Oh, and believe it or not, that has taken us two and a half hours already. So time is definitely ticking down at the moment. And this blue represents the first part of the blue tiger. What do you think about that dream? dream? Anyways, we've got a lot more to do. And I think I'm going to switch back to doing it in rows because there is a lot of different blocks in this tiger. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I kind of feel like the AI is the artist and I'm just the printer printing out the image. All right, we've only got about five hours left to build it and we're still under 50% done. But I think I've got an idea to speed it up a bit. There is a couple large areas made out of only end stone. So if we fill them bits in now, it should save us a bunch of time later. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Right, that should help, but we've still got so much to do and not very much time. So it's time to start making some serious progress. Oh, come on, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm just trying to build. Oh, why does the blue tiger bit have to be so complicated? Hi, Dream. I feel like once we finish the tiger part, it's going to be so much easier because this part is so complicated. It's finally time for this next bit. We need some powdered snow. So if we come over here, we can find our trusty donkey. And he has all the powdered snow for us. Perfect. Hmm. This is going to be interesting. How am I going to build the next layers? <laughs> That's a problem for future lockdown life. All right. Yeah. Future lockdown life is having problems now. The powdered snow ended up slowing us down quite a bit. But I didn't let that get me down because we had nearly finished the blue tiger's head. There we go. That's the tiger's head complete. But before I show you, let's finish the sky.
And after 12 hours of building, the masterpiece is finally finished. AI might be the destruction of the human race, but it can definitely make some awesome art. This is my 3300 day hardcore world, and it's full of lots of epic builds that all have one thing in common. They're made out of lots of blocks, which is a problem because lots of blocks don't fit in my inventory. But there's a solution. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the shulker box. Oh wait, we don't have any. If only we had an unlimited supply. Once we fill this giant shulker box with shulker boxes, we'll have an unlimited supply. So let's get to it. To obtain shulker boxes, we first need to go back to the basics. One shulker the box is made from two shulker shells and one shulker chest in the middle to make a delicious shulker box sandwich. So it looks like we need some wood. And bang, that's 53 chests. And for the second ingredient, we need to head to the end. And here we go, our perfectly transformed end portal. Now we just fly away from the solar system and past the flat earth. We should arrive at an end city. So it's time to extract all the shulker shells. Our first victim. I think you can hide. There's no hiding from lockdown. I get it. You think you're clever. Not very clever anymore. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's all the shulkers from this end city. And we have enough to make eight shulker boxes. There's got to be a faster way of doing this. So I left the end city and threw myself into the world of research, trying to find a way to get thousands of shulker shells. However, I wasn't having any luck and I was starting to lose hope until I clicked on this video. This is going to save us so much time. Oh, wait, that is a lot of resources. But we better get collecting them if we want to have more than eight shulkers. So the first material we're going to collect is 1,237 scaffolding. So we need a lot of bamboo. All right, there might be some sad pandas now, but we've got all the bamboo we're going to need. However, there's still one more thing we need for scaffolding, and that is string. So let's wait till it goes night. Okay, and it's time to hunt some spiders. Our first victim. Only like 200 more string to go. Oh my god, it's spider heaven. They must know we need string or something. This is actually a pretty decent way to get string. We don't even need a string farm. After a very painful night, that is all the scaffolding collected. But that's not the only difficult block we need to collect for this farm. We need over a thousand of these bad boys. The only problem is I don't want to destroy my landscape to do it. I mean, look how beautiful it is. So I've got an idea to build a really overpowered cobblestone generator. That way we won't have to destroy our world, but we'll be able to collect thousands of cobblestone in just a couple of minutes. Ooh, this video looks good. Does your inventory look like this? And do you want it to look like this? Well, you've came to the right video. So welcome to the Unlock Up Death channel. And this is how to make a cobblestone generator. So the first thing you'll need is a bucket of lava. The next thing, a bucket of water. And then you just do something like... Wait, that's wrong. And then you just do something like this. Oh wait, that's... That's cobblestone. Does this guy know what he's doing? And then you just do something like this, and there you go. You have unlimited stone. Huh? Oh, why is that cobblestone? I'm gonna find a better tutorial. This tutorial looks better, and this should be everything we need to build the farm. All I need now is this pig to tell me where to build it. Over there? Okay. And before we start it, we also need a haste 2 beacon. Yeah, the resource blocks are not going to be a problem. And haste 2. Perfect. All right, let's test this thing out. So I think it works like this. Ooh, okay. Let's see how much stone it gets us in five minutes. Okay, in five minutes, we got... Ooh, that is a good amount of stone. We should be able to make all the slabs we need. We can also use these to get some stairs and some building blocks. Perfect, and now we're moving on to some of the more random items. We'll start off with 23 glowstone. Nice. Then 10 snow. Ah, uh, we need a shovel. That's better. And now five carved pumpkins. And that's only three of the remaining 15 items. So now I'm gonna quickly collect four pieces of glass, six observers, 10 powered rails, two activator rails, six levers, three buttons, two chests, two hoppers, two fence gates, two trap doors, one piston, one redstone torch, one target block, two mine carts, two armor stands, 64 temporary blocks, and one shulker. Wait, 
How do I collect a shulker? Also, I kind of need to breathe now. Okay, I think I know how to capture shulkers now. But before I do that, we need to find a place to build our really overpowered farm. What if we just fly through one of these portals? Then it needs to be close to an end city. Whoa, what the hell? Why is this like this? Yeah, this is a weird place. Ooh, yeah, this will do. And does it have shulkers? No, we needed shulkers here. Oh my God, leave me alone. Wait, what? Oh my God, our totem wasn't equipped. And we nearly just died. Please have shulkers? No, why do I always kill them? Elon Husk, tell me where an end city is, please. Um, okay, please don't be looted. No. Oh, and whilst I'm flying, I'm thinking of changing my channel logo. So just make sure you're ready to see that. It'll probably be changed to my character rather than the egg timer logo. Okay, this one's decently close. Yes. Oh my God, it has them. Okay, and now we can actually start building the farm. This place looks good, but it would be nice if it was a bit more flat. And now it's time to build one of the most overpowered shulker farms in the world. Well, definitely in my world. Wait, I think I just wasted 20 minutes because it would be cooler if we built the farm over the void. I guess let's start building out. Oh, this is so slow. Is there a faster way of doing this. Ooh, I've just found out there's an enchantment called Swift Sneak, and it enables you to move faster whilst holding shift, which will make bridging so much faster. The only problem with that is Swift Sneak can only be found in ancient cities, and they are very, very scary. So we need to make sure we're geared up. Come on. And we're finally ready. Okay, I'm pretty sure there's an ancient city down here that we've been to before. Swift Sneak is gonna make bridging so much faster. Okay, so somewhere in there, it's a chest with Swift Sneak, or at least I hope so. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna shift. Why is there a heartbeat? No, okay, don't place blocks. It's so dark, guys. This is what it looks like for you, but this is what it looks like for me. Yeah, it's scary. <laughs> Ooh, a chest. Oh. Um. No. Yes! Swift sneak! Right, I think our best chance is to go straight up into that cave. Okay, go. No! I think... Yeah, I think the warden's getting summoned. If we get up high enough, he won't be able to hit us. And yes! <laughs> we've escaped. Okay, so it should be as simple as putting this on our leggings. And oh my god, yes. I am crouching and this is so fast. Oh my god, this is making bridging so much faster. I guess let's just see how far into the void we can go. Okay, I think this is far enough. I guess now we just need a platform to actually put the shulker farm on. So... And now the only thing stopping us from building this farm this is these is guys. Mata! Perfect, and it's time to build. Oh, and by the way, I'll be using this tutorial that's linked in the description. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight. Now we go this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Place a block and build a three by three platform out of slabs. Wow, Swift Sneak even helps with this. And now this farm's about to get a whole lot snowier because, well, we're adding the snow golems in. One, two, three, four, and five. Looks pretty comfortable in there. But it's about to get even more cramped because I'm going to put some scaffolding there. Okay, I should be able to place it just like... Oh. And now we make a 10 by 10 platform. But now it's time for scaffolding. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna need a bunch of this. I think we just need to do this all the way around. I always think placing scaffolding sounds so nice. Okay, I think this is gonna be like one of the areas where shulkers are gonna spawn. And then we're gonna put an armor stand here, which is actually gonna protect the shulker so it doesn't die. A stone block piston facing this way and a lever. And that's moved the armor stand along to the side of the block. Now it's time to go up, slab here. Oh, not like that. Okay, next we come down here, place a piston like that a regular block like this and a lever here and now we need to get out of the hole then behind here we are going to build a observer clock i'm not exactly sure how to build one of these but let's just follow the tutorial oh it looks pretty easy actually it's just perfect yeah that's kind of annoying 
All right, it's looking good, but it is a bit dark, so let's brighten it up a bit. Wait, have I made a mistake? Because this should have one more slab. Ah, okay, I think I was missing a row of scaffolding here. Oh wait, all these slabs are wrong too. Right, we finally managed to fix it. Oh my god, I'm not making another mistake. <laughs> and now it's scaffolding time again. And it's slabs again. We're literally just adding more and more layers to the farm like a sandwich, so the shulkers have the maximum area to spawn. Okay, it's time for another layer, but this one's not gonna be like the others. Five blocks this way. Now we need it a bit wider. Oh wait, no, not like that. This bit. And then the rest of this can just be filled in with bottom slabs. And now it's time to build the storage system. But I've just realized we forgot to bring our chests. Oh! All right, so for this, it's important to make sure none of these blocks are spawnable. So basically, no shulker box can move onto it. And I want to extend this a bit from the tutorial and put a few more chests. We need to make sure the additional chests are spawn-proofed as well. I think the shulkers are actually going to teleport to that. We need to find another solution. So I was looking in the comments of the tutorial for some solutions, and this guy suggested using an auto drop system with soul sand because soul sand isn't a full block, meaning shulkers can't teleport to it. Well then, to the nether we go. I know I should probably fix my shovel, but it should be fine to just get this. And it broke. Okay, let's see how this goes. All right, this is very loud, but now we should be all right if we surround this all with soul sand. Okay, and now we want to make sure that shulkers can't teleport onto the chests, which means we need to build them under this platform. So this is going to be difficult. No, this is pretty risky. I'm in danger. All right, this should be low enough if we can get a block on the side of here. Nice. Okay, and we can just build out the platform. Okay, and then we'll replace all this dirt with bottom slabs. I really hope I don't make a mistake here. All right, I think... This should be good enough. We had buttons to here. It should make it even safer as well. Okay, the storage system is looking good. All right, next we need to do something like this. Get out of the way. So annoying. Now we just get rid of these and place a trap door like this. Yes, now the next step is going to get rid of these guys. All right, now if we just fly away and go back, <laughs> all the endermen are gone. And now it's back to making the sandwich. Okay, now it's time to build some staircases. Then we do something like... And the same on this side. Ah! <laughs> How did I miss that jump? Wait, I'm just gonna stop this from making a noise because it's really annoying. Now we place some stairs like this and some levers over here. Okay, now we just put activator rails here, powered rails here, then we put a temporary one here, then break it and yes the activator rail should go on a slope like this then we place powered rails up here go all the way up break this one then a slab like that and same on the other side looking good now we place slabs on all of this then a block here and slabs like this going across and now another sandwich layer are you kidding me we're nearly done with this farm and you have to come and ruin it Goodbye. Anyways, yeah, we're nearly done. So we just need to do something like this. Armor stand there, I think. And if we break this and this, the armor stand should drop inside. Perfect. Okay, now we just need to push some glass in. So looks good. Then another bit of glass, a button, and a slab on top. Now to make the farm fully enderman proof. One, two, three, four, five. Glowstone. And from here, we just do the finishing touches to the sandwich. Okay, we're nearly done. There's just a few final things to do. Minecarts there and there. Also, we can put the observer back. Now we need to make sure this lever is turned on like that. We also need to make sure there's no possible blocks the shulker could teleport to. So let's move all these. And we don't have a shovel. Yeah, I'm gonna go get one. Oh, and whilst I'm here, I'll grab a bunch of rails and redstone torches. Okay, this is a lot better. Okay, the farm is ready. Now it's time for Operation Shulker Collection. This operation is going to have multiple steps. And step number one is building a railway all the way from here to the end city. 
Okay, we've run out of rails, so whilst we're here, we might as well start step two, which is gonna be getting potions so the shulker doesn't shoot us, and potions so we can heal the shulker. We'll chuck nether warts in each one of these. Then, I believe, golden carrots. And this should give us night vision potions. But lockdown life, why do you need night vision potions? Well, I'm glad you asked, because we don't. Bruh. We're just gonna add some fermented spider eyes to these, and then they should turn into potions of invisibility. We'll add some redstone to make it last longer, and gunpowder to make it splash. All right, that's the first potion done. The next is the potion of regeneration. So for this, we do the same thing with the nether wart. Oh, they're already awkward potions. But the next item it requires is something much more sinister. The tear of a giant white cube. I know there's one here somewhere. I've got my trusty sniper rifle at hand. The visibility is not good in here. It's quite eerie. This is their usual mating grounds. I don't see them though. Here's the remains of one. There it is! Yes! The tear of a giant white cube. But I'm not finished with my sniper rifle yet. We need a couple more of those. Let's go! Yes, the final gas tier. Right, I don't really know what happened to me then, but uh, we have all four gas tiers. So let's put these in here. And yes, potion of regeneration. Perfect. So with the potions and all the rails I just crafted, it's time to complete Operation Shulker Collection. So first, let's finish this railway. The shulker is going to be going that way. So uh, we don't even need powered rails for this hill, but we do need them this side. All right, we could go around this or we could just go straight over it. Yeah, out of the way, please. Ooh. I really hope Enderman can't pick rails up. Uh oh, that has a bit of a problem. All right, 3v1, I've got this. Oh, maybe no. I don't, maybe I don't. Yeah, I'm just gonna fly away. All right, we're pretty much at the end city now. So let's just test it out to see if the shulker will get there safely. Wee! Oh, this is really cool. Well, it's working good so far. Looks like it's pretty good. Oh! oh. That was kind of scary. <laughs> Anyways, we need to build this bit of the track so it takes the shulker up there. Wait, where did you get that block from? Anyways, this end is done. Now it's just the end city end. But before we do this, let's make sure to use our potion of invisibility. Ooh, I'm a ghost. All right, now we'll continue like normal up until the end city. Wait, why are they shooting at me? I've got invisibility on. Maybe they can see my armor? We need to be careful this doesn't run out. All right, now we need to build some kind of pickup system. Wait, what? And we need to use the potion of regen to make sure they don't hurt each other. All right, so we need to build something like this, like this, like that. Then if we grab our minecart, we'll splash them one more time and... Yes, he's going to the farm. Please let this work. Okay, we'll keep our distance so he doesn't try and shoot me. But everything's going to plan so far. Goodbye, little shulker. Oh, the moment of truth. Is it going to work? Wait, I forgot to put a redstone torch on the activation rail. We've got invis. So if we take our armor off. Oh, I don't want to do this over the void. I'm ready to get the elytra out of my inventory and put it on. Please let this work. Don't hit me, Mr. Shulker. And then we turn it on. Yes. Wait, where is he? Is that the right place? No. Huh? How? How have you gone there? That is definitely not the right place for him to go. Sorry, Shulker, I gave you every chance to go into the right place and you didn't. So if we get rid of all the soul sand and then we cover each side of these blocks with buttons. All right, let's try it again. I think that should have fixed it. Take my armor off. Wait, what? Why can you see me? How? How can you see me? I'm invisible. This should grab him. Nice. He's making his way across the bridge. It says in the tutorial it can take up to five minutes to get in the right place. So we'll just give it that time. Yes, it's finally in the right place in the farm. Now we can just delete all of this. And all that's left to do now is start the farm. Let's see how many shulker shells we can get in one hour. Okay, it's been pretty much exactly an hour. Let's see how many shulker shells we've got. Wait, it looks like there's a bit of a spillage. 124. We should be getting 750. And the farm's definitely working. I mean, listen to that. So we need to somehow make sure all of these things are being collected. Okay, so yeah, looking at the replay, a lot of these shells are missing their mark. So if we just expand this area, 
and we make sure all of the hoppers lead to this middle one. I'm sure this will be enough. Let's add one more layer around the edge just in case. All right, surely that dropper can't miss. Okay, that went in. Okay, that went in. That's going in. That's in. That's in. All right, yeah, all of them are making it in now. So this is going to drastically improve our rate. Now I'm going to AFK overnight and see how many shulker shells we can get. Okay, it's the next day. It's been about 12 hours. Let's see how many shulker shells we've got. Oh my god. Yeah, that's enough shulker shells for 4,000 shulker boxes. So that means one part of the recipe is now ticked off. All we need to do now is somehow get 4,000 chests. And we're going to do this by following this tutorial to build one of the most overpowered wood farms in the game. The only problem being that this farm requires 30 honey blocks and for some reason our honey farm has stopped working. So I guess let's tear it down and start building a better one. And now let's grab all the materials we'll need for the bee farm. Okay, so that's all the materials. Now we need to find some bees. I'm pretty sure I've found bee nests around here before. Ooh, there's a bee. Uh, do you have a nest, my friend? Oh, here's a bee nest. All right, get back in the nest. I think I'm... Yeah, I've captured them all in here. All right, now if I get some glass, then we get some flowers. Can we put a door on here? Campfires, trap doors, flowers down all in here. And then our beehives along here. This should work. And then we can breed these bees and get another bee. And now we just repeat this until we've got three bees in each one of these. Right, we've got the bees now, but apparently it's important we build this in the end because there's no daylight cycle, meaning the bees will always be awake. This island looks like a good place, so let's build this farm. Okay, next we release the bees. Now we can finally add the flowers to the farm. And then the last thing we need to do is add all the glass bottles to the dispensers. Okay, we just got our first eight honey, which is two honey blocks. So the farm's working. Let's see how much we can get in a couple of hours. All right, I may have ended up AFKing overnight. So we've definitely got enough honey bottles. Craft this into honey. And that's the honey ticked off the list. All right, now the rest of the material should be pretty easy. For example, 208 iron blocks, 71 oak leaves, and 36 slime blocks. And that's all the rest of the items as well. Now let's build this wood farm. Okay, so this is all the collection area built. We're now going to build the leaf crushers and all of them will feed into here, into this dropper and give us unlimited saplings to carry on spamming bone meal. Wait, this honey is so annoying, I can't jump. Okay, and now we need to put fence gates all along here, which is actually going to be what crushes the leaves and breaks them. Oh, and these need to be open. And now we need the same thing on the other side. Right, and now we need to just connect these two together with redstone. All right, so the leaf destroyer is now working. Perfect. Now we need to build a double piston extender here, which is going to push all the logs that way. Okay, this is all connected and working as well. And now we're building the collection system because this farm collects 10,000 logs per hour. All right, that's looking pretty good. And now it's finally time to work on the TNT duplicator. Okay, the farm's basically finished. All we need to do now is load it up with bone meal. And I know just where to get it. Perfect. And now all that's left to do is turn the farm on and try it out. Oh my God, it's working so well. All right, so I'm gonna leave this running whilst I'm at the gym and we'll see how much wood we can get. Right, I just got back from the gym. Let's see how much wood we got. Oh my god, yes. And the same on the other side as well. Now we can finally craft all the shulker boxes we need. So finally, after hours of collecting resources, making these farms and using these farms, it's finally time to craft the shulker boxes. That's five shulkers of shulker shells. Oh my god. And that is kind of hard to say. Now let's convert all of this wood into chests. Well, first we need to make a crafting table. Yeah, this is going to take a while. And finally, we have all the shulker shells, all the chests, 
Now let's combine them into shulker boxes. How many shulker boxes does it take to fill a shulker? Let's fill it up. I have heard stories that this has broken some people's worlds, but um, let's hope that doesn't happen. And let's make sure not to put our firework one in here because without it, we won't be able to get home. <laughs> wow, this is the most shulker boxes I've ever had. Okay, we're on our fourth layer, which means we've already placed over 600 shulker boxes. Oh my god. Okay, the giant shulker is now halfway full, which means we have enough storage for 3.5 million items. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to run out of shulker boxes. And after another hour of shulker box placing, we have finally done it. This shulker box stores over 7 million items. Wait a second, where's my rocket shulker? No! 120 million blocks. That's the same distance as flying around the earth three times. Or double the distance of a Minecraft map. And I'm going to travel it in less than a second. So to find out how this is possible, you'll need to watch till the very end. A while ago, I made a video where I traveled to the world border and it was really cool. So I want to do it again, but this time see a world border on each side of the map. So let's pick a direction and get walking. Wait a second, we have a big problem. I just did the maps and we walk in Minecraft at four meters per second, which comes out to just under a year of straight walking. There's got to be a faster way. Wait. These would be faster. Be my friend. Wow, this horse is really playing hard to get. I will tame you. Yes. I think he's my friend. Now we need a saddle. And if we put this on him, he is faster than walking, but I think we can do better. Let's try this guy. Okay, yeah, this guy is much faster, but I can't help but think we could get even faster. So I've spent some time building this. Behold, the horse speed measuring machine 3000. So as you might have guessed, this machine is going to help us measure the speed of the horses. Um. Did you just see my carrot? So let's test this one. Bang, nine blocks per second. That's decent, but as you can see, the fastest horse we can get is around 14 blocks per second. So now let's search for that mystery horse. Perhaps it could even be this one. All right, what will horse number two get? Nine blocks per second. You guys can chill together. Wow, this one's moving fast already. I think this guy feels faster. Horse number four, will he be able to do it? There we go, 10 blocks per second. He's the fastest one so far, so he gets to live in a hole. Bro. Horse number five. Hmm. Horse number six, seven blocks per second. That is terrible. So what if it was a donkey? It should have been a faster donkey. Wait, we already have a horse, but I can't remember if it was fast or not. You shall be horse number seven. All right, here we go. Ooh, 12 blocks per second. You can go in a slightly bigger hole. Now, if we can find another 12 blocks per second horse, we should be able to breed them and get the possibility of an even faster horse. Or at least I think that's how it works. So that's how it went for a while. I would find horses and then measure their speed until this happened. And I definitely didn't have to stay up all night to get this guy. Anyways, now that we've got him, we can breed him with all these 12 blocks per second horses and hopefully get our hands on the elusive 14 block per second horse. Okay, so to breed horses, we need golden carrots, which we can get by grabbing some emeralds from here, heading down to our basement and trading with these guys. All right, that should be good. Okay, so for breeding them, all I'm gonna do is take a 12 block per second horse, introduce him to the mega horse and make them make a smaller horse. Yay! And once he grows up, we can put him to the test. Any horse that scored 12 blocks per second would join the others. But anything below that, well, they got disposed of. I've killed so many horses and we're still no closer to the 14 block per second horse. We haven't even got a 13 one. So I've had to make the decision to use this one as our horse. So this horse is about three times faster than walking. So you may be thinking this journey will still take us four months to complete. But that's where you're wrong because one block in the nether actually equals eight blocks in the overworld. Meaning this horse won't be traveling at 13 blocks per second. It will be traveling at 13 times times eight, which looks like this. 
Also, there won't be obstacles like this because we'll be doing it on the nether roof. Speaking of which, yeah in the portal and i guess let's just see how far you can get in 10 minutes starting now all right that's 10 minutes let's see how far we got oh my god we spawned a zombie spawner oh it's a spider spawner. Wow, 63,000 blocks away. But on my journey, I think I discovered a problem. You see, 10 minutes is quite a long time, especially if you have to hold down W that entire time. I mean, my hand kind of hurts now. Imagine it after 120 million blocks. So unfortunately, I think that rules the horse method out. At this point, I was feeling quite sad. I had spent days trying to get the perfect horse and it was all for nothing. But that's exactly when I had an idea for a machine that would change everything. It will be made out of slime blocks and honey blocks and it will be a flying machine that flies us all the way to the world border automatically. Meaning I won't have to injure my hand to do it. So first up, let's grab all the slime blocks we're going to need. Down the little weird hole. Yoink. We'll grab all the redstone stuff. And finally, we can get the honey from the bee farm we built last episode which was very good by the way so i recommend watching it hello bees and seeing as we're here we might as well build the flying machine on top of the flat earth all right i've only built this once so let's hope i can remember how to do this so observer facing that way sticky piston um oh we need to remove this one <laughs> observer sticky piston slime next one is honey back to slime and then we just repeat this for a bit and whilst i'm building that i want to introduce you guys to someone say hello to mini lockdown life <laughs> i'm literally like every other hardcore youtuber now wait what's that you want to say something subscribe to lockdown life now and help him reach 1 million subscribers so make sure to subscribe before then to become an og well said mini lockdown life now back to the machine um that was definitely not supposed to happen can we fix this by somehow sending it back the other way um that should not be there <laughs> oh it's all going wrong Okay, it's finally done. It looks so cool. Here is my spaceship. All right, so to test if this works, we're going to see if it can go from the flat Earth all the way over to the solar system. So if we break this... Bruh. What? No! All right, I think I fixed the problem. Let's try out version 2.0. This time, instead of having concrete behind, I've added extra honey and slime blocks. Because the machine couldn't pull them along, it could only push these. Or at least that's what I think. We're about to find out. Oh my god, the same thing happened again. This is spaceship version 5.0. Yeah, we're just not going to talk about 3 and 4. But now, if we hop on here, make sure we're on the honey block. And if we break this... Now this should take us all the way to the solar system. All right, and if my calculations are correct, this obsidian I put here should stop us. So now we've got a machine that actually works. Let's try it out in the nether. All right, nice, it's all set up. Let's see how it compares to the horse method in 10 minutes. Right, it's been 10 minutes and I broke the machine, but let's see how far we got. Okay, looks like we're in some kind of weird cave. But the most important thing is, wait, we only got 11,000 blocks away. That is so slow. What are we actually going to do? I mean, I did sort of have an idea whilst I was flying. Okay, hear me out. We all know enderpearls can be used to teleport you in Minecraft, but that alone is not very useful. However, if we use a TNT cannon to shoot an enderpearl thousands of blocks and continue doing that multiple times, we might be able to get to the world borders really, really fast. However, I soon realized that this enderpearl cannon idea was not going to work because you can't use water water in the nether. Who would have thought? At this point, I was a very sad lockdown life. I mean, even mini lockdown life was upset. I thought there was no way I'd ever be able to travel 120 million blocks in Minecraft. And I seriously considered giving up and just going to bed. That's when I decided to go and pay a visit to my old friend, Mark. And he told me not to give up because if you never give up, then you can never fail. At least that's what I think he was saying. <laughs> Nevertheless, Mark was right. Now was not the time for giving up. It was the time for research. So I threw myself into the world of books and learned to challenge the very physics of Minecraft itself. Eventually, I started to see hope. And before I knew it, I had a plan. 
So I've discovered a way to travel 60 million blocks across the map and then 60 million back in only a few seconds. But this is going to take a lot of preparation, so let's get to work. Oh, I don't have my lights on. The first thing we're going to need is about 60 shulker boxes. So thank God for last episode. To build the machine that's going to let us travel in seconds, we're going to need redstone and a bunch of these other items. Okay, now we just need some of the obsidian we got from breaking all the pillars in the end. And that's pretty much everything we need to travel 120 million blocks in a couple of seconds. However, to make this work, we first need to travel to each of the world borders and actually set up the machine. And to do this, first, we're going to need some more elytras. I say we're going to need at least 60 more. Bring on the end city. Ooh, a ship already. No, we are going to have to go a lot further away. Is this one going to be looted too? Yes, it is. All right, I've just put my render distance on 32, so now we should be able to find all the end cities. This has got to be like the biggest end city without a ship. Oh, yes. Okay, maybe... Yes, Elytra number one. Only 59 more to go. There's a weirdly rendered half ship. It's missing the side with the Elytra. Oh. Yes, actually a full ship. I never thought I'd have to be worried about that. And Elytra number two. Yes, Elytra number three. Number four. Uh, yeah, number five. This is actually going pretty fast. And Elytra number nine. One full row of Elytras. And Elytra 13. There's 17, 24. And here is Elytra number 27. A whole shulker box of Elytras. But there's still 33 to go, so let's speed it up. Okay, and with this final one, we now have 60 more elytras. Now we're going to make them even better by adding unbreaking three and mending to each one. These guys are about to get a lot of business. Right, that's mending added to everything and that's unbreaking added to everything too the next thing we need is rockets because without them elytras are pretty useless and we're gonna need thousands of them so let's afk at the creeper farm come on creepers die and give me your powder wait i've just realized if we replace these campfires with soul campfires then it should kill the creepers a lot faster the creeper flow is blocked so once this guy dies we should be safe to go in all right and um, break these and replace them perfect now we can just unleash the creepers no don't blow up oh my god all right so now we should be able to get gunpowder a lot faster Okay, it's been a while and all of these chests are now filled with gunpowder. That is over 100,000 gunpowder. But now it's time for the second ingredient of fireworks, which is paper. And for this, we're going to need to fix this sugarcane farm because I'm pretty sure one of the hopper minecarts is not meant to be down here. Okay, I've pretty much fixed it. So now if I tap this, it should go along and collect all the sugarcane and bring it into these chests. So I'm going to leave this running for a couple of hours and whilst it's running, turn all this stuff into paper. All right, and now we're gonna use this paper and combine it with gunpowder to make fireworks. But not just any fireworks. We're gonna make flight duration three fireworks, which means that one rocket will be able to take us a lot further. Okay, with these two shulkers in here, we now have 34 shulker boxes full of flight duration three rockets. That's gonna be more than enough. So now let's just get our final few items. Firstly, a shulker box of totems because this journey is gonna be dangerous. Now we're gonna need a bunch of golden carrots so we don't starve to death. And now we should probably make sure all of our elytras are at full health. Oh, yeah. It is so loud. And now we'll just craft up a bunch of ender chests so we can have constant access to our items. Nice. And finally, the last thing we need to do is build all the redstone. So this first thing is going to be a chunk loader. And now we just build the exact same thing in this nether fortress. I might just block this off quickly. Now all we need to do is fill this up with blocks and fill this up with blocks. And now it should be working. Yes, it's working. Basically, all it does is throw sand through the portal, which will keep this chunk loaded even when I'm millions of blocks away. So for this, we're going to need a daylight sensor and we're going to set it to night mode. Then we're going to dig down here and make ourselves a nice ender pill stasis chamber, which should work if we just do this. 
Nice. Then we can add this trap door and wait till night time to throw the pearl. Don't worry if you don't understand this redstone stuff, because I've literally spent hours coming up with this plan and I barely understand it. Bruh. Anyways, now we need another one of these chambers. That is not right. Oh, I'm sure but this time we need a big delay. Then we just need a redstone torch here and a button. Let's just make sure it works. All right, looks good. Now I'm just going to get my inventory sorted, and when it turns night, we'll throw the pills, and we'll be on our way to the first world border. All right, it's night. Let's throw... Uh, do you mind? Okay, it's night now. Let's throw our pills. They're all good. And now let's start our 30 million block journey to the first world border. All right, so we're going to head directly up first. And I think we're literally going to do this until we break our first elytra. As you can see, I've put the mini HUD in the top left so you guys can always see the coordinates. I wonder how high we're going to get. I think my first elytra is about to break. Oh. There it goes. Uh, let's not lose too much height. And then we'll do the same until this breaks. And then we should be able to just glide from there. It won't take us all the way to the world border, but we'll just see how far we can go. Not gonna lie, seeing this high number is actually making me a bit nervous now. Like, what if I get stuck at the world border? This could actually be the end of my world. I've literally been flying straight up for about an hour now. Okay, when we run out of rockets, like now, we're going to readjust and go at minus 25 degrees as the angle. Now we literally don't have to do anything apart from every 30 minutes we need to come back and swap out our elytras. All right, so we've got four and a half hours worth of elytras, and I think this is gonna take about 20 hours, so I'm gonna be awake for a long time. All right, we're coming up on the first 10,000 blocks traveled. There we go, and remember, one block in the nether equals eight blocks in the overworld, so we're actually at minus 80,000 right now. Well, there's 50,000 blocks. Oh. Let's go! 100,000 blocks. Just 3.65 million blocks to go. Yeah, I'm gonna watch a couple of films, and whilst I'm doing that, try and think of a name for you guys. Let me know if you have any suggestions down below. Alright, a little update. We just ran out of heights and we've nearly run out of elytras and we're at 835,000 blocks away. So now we're just going to restock, get more fireworks and now literally repeat the same process of flying straight up in the air for thousands of blocks. I'm literally having to click my mouse every second for multiple hours to do this video. So make sure you watch to the very end because it's going to be so cool when I travel 120 million blocks in just a few seconds. Oh, here we go. We're about to hit 1 million blocks away. Let's go. Everything's looking good and I'll see you at 2 million. Oh my god, this is taking a very long time. And there's 2 million blocks. We are now over halfway and we're finally over 3 million blocks. Only about 600,000 more to go. If this doesn't work, we're going to be so screwed. Right, here we go. We're about to reach it. Once we hit 3.75 million blocks, we are at the world border. And there we go. Now it's time to get to work. The first thing we need to do is build a chunk loader. Before we light it and go through the portal, we need to make sure that it's nighttime when we come out. And the only way to do that is to wait until the day number changes and then wait an extra 10 minutes. All right, the number just changed. So now we just wait exactly 10 minutes. If we get the timing wrong, this entire idea will be ruined. Okay, when the timer goes off, we light the portal and go through. Oh my God. We're only gonna have about eight minutes to build everything. So we need to make sure we do it fast. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Oh my god, we're exactly at the world border. Wait, is that going to be a problem? Let's break this portal and instead let's make it more central in this chunk. No, we can't sleep. Why didn't I bring my axe? Get out of the way, tree. Oh, not a creeper. Come on, leave me alone. Okay, we need to get this portal built. So just in case we can go back through if we need to. Oh my oh, god, there's so many phantoms. Wait, I think it's nearly daytime. We're not going to have enough time this time, so let's just set this up as best as we can. All right, we'll leave it like this for now, and we'll come back tomorrow and do it. That went so badly. All right, it's time. And there's a zombie. Up there. Ow. 
Can they not? All right, I'm gonna kill these guys. Now we can set up the enderpearl stasis chambers. All right, this is gonna be the first one. All right, nice. That's set up. Now we need the other one over here. All right, this should be deep enough. Then if we have a button on that. Yeah, that closes it. Perfect. And now we have repeaters going into this and we need a lot of them. And we are running out of time again. So let's do it on a another night. I'm literally burning wood to get torches. Let's light up the area with torches first, just so we can get rid of all the excess mobs. This should make it easier. All right, now we need to carry on placing these. Why is there still mobs? They just keep coming. No. Nope. Oh my god. Okay, it's all been leading up to this. Will this work? The first thing we need to do is throw a pearl. Now, we need to do this next part really fast. Otherwise, this entire video is going to be scrapped. Okay, so click and then sleep straight away. When we wake up, we're teleported. We need to click that button. And then, we'll be teleported all the way back. 30 million blocks. And then we need to throw a pearl there. Perfect. And now we're back at spawn, but we have a pearl all the way at the world border. Oh, that was stressful, but thank God it actually worked. Right now, before we leave to the next world border, we need to make our way home, which is going to involve a lot of repeaters. So let's grab all of these and a bunch more repeaters. And now we just put as much delay as possible. All right, that should do. And now we just throw our pearl here and that's our way home sorted. All right, now we can just literally repair all of our elytras. And now it's time to head to the complete opposite side of the map. Oh, that is in the way. This 20 plus hour journey was pretty similar to my first one. The only difference being I was a bit more relaxed this time. So I made a few more mistakes. However, during the last couple of hours, the magnitude of what I'm doing dawned on me. My PC had been running Minecraft for over 50 hours straight, and coming up with the plan nearly drove me crazy. And I'd added nearly 300 days to my hardcore world. And yet, if I was successful, I was about to travel nearly half the speed of light, all in a block game. And there we go, we are here. Let's see the world border. There it is. It's in a completely different biome to the other one. Well, obviously, it's literally... 60 million blocks away. <laughs> right, I'm gonna burn this tree out of the way. I'd be lying if I said the pressure wasn't getting to me. All right, is it gonna work? So it should work if we put a block on here. Yes, it's working. All right, we need to be quick. All right, straight away in this chunk, dig down. Water on top, soul sand. Kelp, kelp, kelp. Nice kelp all the way to the top. Break it. And we'll set that to 0.5 seconds. That's how long that is. And if we throw a pearl, all right, it's set up. So when it goes night, we are going to be teleported from here, x equals 30 million, to x equals minus 30 million, and then back again to here for a total of 120 million blocks traveled. All this work leading up to this. Okay, we're about to find out, is this actually going to work? Come on, please. We put so much work into this. Yes! Oh my god, it actually worked! Let's go! And whilst I'm waiting to be teleported back to base, you guys should watch this video next. There we go, we are back at base. 63 biomes are in Minecraft, and for every single one, I'm gonna build a planet. And by the end of the video, we'll have a galaxy of planets with every biome. And trust me, it's gonna look so cool. But to get to that, we need to start on our first planet, the Ice Spikes planet. This planet's gonna look really cool, and for it, we need packed ice, regular ice, and a bunch of snow. Now, to get to the point where we actually want to build the planet, we're going to need a bunch of dirt. Nice. Okay, and now the plan is to get into the end and build away from the solar system. So we have a nice big area to build our galaxy. Okay, so we'll start at Uranus and we'll just build out from here. Oh, yes. Swift Sneak is going to help so much with this. All right, this looks like a good place. So let's put down some water. That is kind of scary. <laughs> now we want to go one, two, three, four, five down. And this is where we're going to start building the planet. All right, for the actual planet itself, we're going to use a mixture of snow and regular ice. All right, I know what you're thinking. This looks nothing like the ice spikes biome. I mean, we've got the ice, but we're missing the spike. Don't 
mind me, just building a massive spike for a planet. And that's the ice spike planet complete. Yeah, it definitely looks really cool, but it did take a long time to make. And if I have to do 63 of them like this, it's gonna take a while. So I think we're gonna start off with the easier planets and then move on to the harder ones later. So for our next planet, let's do a simple planes biome, which is literally just grass, dirt, and I guess a bit of stone. Okay, and now this should be an extremely easy build. Wow, that was fast to build. However, it looks a little boring, but I've got an idea to fix that. All we need is a little skeleton. Take your bones and bang. Next up is the desert planet. So we've got sand, also sandstone, cacti, and these dead bushes. Bruh. Wait, what? Oh, we need shears. Yes, iron. Oh, finally. Actually, let's add a well as well. Oh my god, I said well twice. Wait, they're literally stealing my planet. I guess the only way to get rid of them is gonna be to light this area up. So... Oh no. Do torches melt ice? No, they do. That is not good. Oh my god, they've literally destroyed all this island. Okay, so I've done some research and apparently a light source that doesn't melt ice is soul torches. And for that, we need some soul sand. Alright, and I think it's like this? Nice. Okay, now hopefully this won't melt the ice. Okay, it looks good. We'll get the inside too and replace all the ice that melted. Put torches absolutely everywhere because they are stealing all the blocks. I literally hate these guys. Oh, wait. Endermen that have blocks in their hands don't despawn. Wait, if we break ice on top of them, it should melt into water and kill them. There we go. Now, if I go in here and stand in the water, they can't get me. Look what they've done to my beautiful planet. I hate them. Now we can finally move on to the desert planet. I think this one will look good over here. All right, and because sand blocks have gravity, we're gonna build the bottom layers out of sandstone. Plus that's how deserts are built anyway. Okay, I think now it's time to start integrating the sand a bit more. So this layer can all be sand, no problem. But this is where it gets a bit difficult because we need sand there. I guess we can just support it with dirt. This seems like it's working. Right now this bit all needs to be dirt. Okay, that's all the sand. Now we can add the cacti. Oh wait, the only place we can add these is at the top. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to scrap the well because there's no space for cacti otherwise. And dead bushes. Wow, if this is how cool it looks with only three planets, imagine how cool it's gonna look with 60. Speaking of which, let's make some more progress. So I built the snowy plains planet, which is basically the same as the plains planet, but with snow. Then next was the meadow biome, which is the same as the plains biome, but with flowers. And then the sunflower plains biome, which is the same as the plains biome, but with only sunflowers. Anyways, then I continued to progress and build up the galaxy of planets. That was until I came to a realization. Some of these biomes, like the savannah and the savannah plateau, are gonna look the exact same as planets. So instead of building two identical planets, we're just gonna build one, and we'll use the extra planet space to build some custom planets. Speaking of which, let's build the first one now. This planet is gonna be called the capitalist planet. It's entirely centered around money, so that means this planet is gonna be quite expensive to build. We're gonna need a bunch of this, some of this, and a whole bunch of this. All right, let's do this. I was gonna say this is a waste of emeralds, but we do have a million of them. We now need to make some luxurious trees. These are some expensive leaves. All right, I really hope this looks like a tree. I'd say that's a pretty good tree. Wait, no, I think it needs to be one taller. There we go, that looks a wow. lot better. Now let's add one more tree, and that's the capitalist planet complete. Okay, I've got loads of really cool custom biomes that we'll build later on in the video. But for now, let's make some more progress with the actual biomes. So now we're gonna build the warm ocean biome, which means we're gonna need a bunch of this stuff. And we also need to make sure to get all these fans. Now it's quite dark in the ocean biomes, so we're definitely gonna need some sea pickles. Oh, these are my favorite. Let me know your favorite item in the comments. And finally, a warm ocean biome wouldn't be complete without some tropical fish. Ooh, a puffer fish. Yoink. All right, and we can't just use water to make this planet because it'll do that and just fall. So instead, we're gonna build the outline out of glass. Bang. 
look, we have a giant ball of glass. Now, if we just come over here and steal some sun, we can place this down to mimic the floor of the ocean. Now for the difficult part, if we just do this, we have an infinite water source and we're gonna fill it all up with water. We can't miss a single block, otherwise it is gonna look weird. All right, looking good. Now we can start decorating. So we'll put seagrass, we'll have some kelp. And of course, to light it up, let's use sea pickles. They're actually a really good light source. And finally, to bring this planet to life, let's add some fish. Wait, this guy reminds me of like the Cadbury's caramel. Anyone know what I mean? That is definitely one of my favorite planets so far. But this next one is gonna compete with it because we're building a mushroom biome. Okay, so for this one, the difficult part is actually finding the mushroom biome. I always forget to remember their core Coordinates. Hello, mushrooms, where are you? Yes, finally. Okay, and I've got silk touch, so we should be able to get this. Perfect. Wait, I just want to try something. Bruh. <laughs> it turns it into a normal cow. All right, and we'll also get a bunch of these. All right, I think I'll put this biome over here. So the layers of this planet go stone, dirt, and mycelium. All right, and now we can just spam mushrooms all over the place. Then if we just bone meal them, Nice. Okay, there's the mushroom fields planet. Now we're gonna make the most of these leftover mushrooms and build the dark oak forest planet. All right, perfect. And we forgot our axe. So maybe let's just try and get some saplings. Wait, I've got fortune three. Will this help? Yes. Ooh, you'll be useful for bone meal. All right, let's build this planet. All right, I may have forgot to get grass, so I'm just gonna steal it from this planet. All right, perfect. Now we can use all those skeleton bones, turn it into bone meal and... That is a thick tree. Right, now we need to sneak some mushrooms in here somewhere. Ow. And over here, we'll put a brown one. Will it grow? No. Okay, and once the grass grows, that biome will be complete. All these biome planets are looking really cool, but one thing is really annoying me. There is literally torches covering every planet, and it just looks a bit weird. Wait, what if we use our invisible torch texture pack? Oh my god, yes! The biomes look so much better. Oh no, it doesn't do soul torches. At this point, I was really upset. All this hard work was going to be ruined if I couldn't fix this problem. I'm going to hire someone on Fiverr to make me a texture pack that makes torches and soul torches invisible. Ooh, this guy looks pretty good. So we got to talking. I told him what I needed and he said he could do it no problem. And sure enough, in about an hour, this was the result. Okay, I've just put the texture pack on. Let's see. Oh my god, yes! There's no soul torches. They're completely invisible. Oh, this makes it look so much better. So now with that out of the way, let's make some serious progress. First things first, we need a lot of stone. All right, and now we also need loads of dirt and grass. And now, let me show you something called the magic of video editing. There we go, we have 12 more planets, and they're all blank like this, so let's decorate them. The first biome is going to be a bamboo jungle. So we're going to need a bunch of this, a bunch of this, is it called Podzel? Nice. And of course, some watermelon. All right, so let's replace all this grass with Podzel. Okay, now we can plant a bunch of this bamboo. Oh my god, it grows so fast. All right, then we'll scatter some melons around. Are you okay? We'll also do one of these, like bushy jungle things yeah that's what i'll call them and we'll finish it off with more bamboo all right and whilst that stuff is growing let's get on to the next biome which is going to be the flower forest all right this one should be pretty easy all we need is some flowers and a couple of saplings my god how many leaves do i have to break finally. Then with a bit of bone meal, and that's the flower forest biome done. All right, next up is the swamp biome. So we'll get lily pads, vines. Wait, how'd you get vines? Is it with shears? Yes. Then we should probably get some clay and a couple of trees. All right, now if we just steal some water from the ocean biome, we need to create like a pool of water on this planet. So let's use dirt underneath. Doesn't actually have to be that deep. All right, I'm liking that. Now we can swap out some of the dirt for clay. So a clay patch there and maybe one here, like kind of in the side. And now we just add the water. Get rid of this bit. Then we can plant our trees and our lily pads. Even though it's not part of the biome, I feel like this kind of matches is the swamp 
aesthetic. I don't like how you can see through the gaps. Okay, and now that the trees have grown, we can add all the vines. And these should just grow by themselves, so we can move on to the next biome. This will be interesting because we've somehow got to build the river biome as a planet. All right, so first I think we get rid of this middle section. Then we pretty much completely flatten these walls. Alright, now we can replace this bottom layer of dirt with sand. Okay, and then we add the water. Alright, we don't need to make it perfectly still because rivers flow anyway. But I'm thinking we maybe turn the side of this glass like we did with the ocean. Alright, now we just add the finishing touches, some torches, and a few decorations for the actual river. Look, the river actually has a current. Okay, now I'm gonna speedrun some of the more boring biomes so we can make some even faster progress. All right, we've made a good amount of progress now. I think it's time we move on to the nether biomes. All right, so we've got the nether wasteland biome. Make sure we get a bunch of quartz and also a bunch of gold. Out. Oh yeah, we should probably also get lava. All right, and now the warped forest biome. So we'll need a bunch of this blue nether grass thing. You can just give me that, please. Thank you. And instead of chopping down trees, we'll just get some of them mushrooms. Then all we need is the vines and whatever these things are. Okay, now for the dangerous one, the crimson forest. A bunch of this red grass stuff. And yes, I know it's called Nylium. I just call it red grass stuff because that's what it is. Okay, now we'll get some of these mushrooms again so we don't have to collect the trees. And we'll get some of these vine things. These kind of look like red tentacles. Kind of glad there's no fat pigs around because those guys hurt. Now the basalt delta biome. So we'll start things off with basalt. Oh, bro, this takes ages. Speaking of ages, we're approaching 4,000 days. So there should be a full movie coming out very soon. Okay, now we need to find the final biome, which is that valley made out of soul sand. I forget what it's called. <laughs> Lol, I'm just joking. It's obviously called the soul sand valley. I'm not a noob. Um, anyway, it's here. Time for my favorite part of every episode. And then a bunch of this stuff. All right, I think I'll build the red nether biomes first. One here. One here. And one here. Now let's decorate them. So for this one, we'll do the Crimson Forest. So let's replace the top layer of netherrack. All right, nice. That biome's looking good. Now we'll do the same again with the Warped Forest biome. Just gonna steal some of these bone blocks. Yoink. Oh, and to finish it off, we need some vines. We'll let these grow on their own. Now for the nether waste biome. We're gonna need some of this. All right, for this, I think I'm gonna build a bit of a higher part up here. Try and make this look somewhat natural. It's gonna be hard. Okay, then we'll dig this down a bit here. Try and get a bit of depth to it. We have some lava coming out of here. Nice, and then we'll fill this up. And we have ourselves a lava lake. Then we'll add some quartz and gold. All right, nice. Now for the last two nether biomes. We've got the basalt delta biome. Oh, this looks really cool already and we still need to add the spires. I feel like I've built this kind of thing so many times and we want the biggest spires to be in the very center of the planet. And now we add the lava. This looks so cool. And I think the final nether biome can go over here. Now we add some of this stuff, but the main thing I want is some sort of bone structure. Considering the small scale, I'm pretty happy with that. And that's all the nether biomes complete. But I've got an idea for a really cool custom biome. All we need is some glass from the asteroid, a bunch of magenta dye, and some obsidian. How did I only just remember to replace my totem? Bruh. Anyways, I think this custom biome can go about here. Yep, it's a nether portal planet, and it works using different colored glass to create a fog effect. Wow, we've actually made so much progress. But before we move on to the next planet, I've got an idea to really bring this galaxy to life. For this, we're gonna need white concrete, but more importantly, a bunch of end rods. Okay, and now let's bring light to our galaxy. Wait, I'm basically like this galaxy's god. Anyways, my idea is to do something like this as stars throughout the galaxy. Wait, I think I've got an idea for an even better star. This is gonna be annoying. All right, so we're here at our frog island. Oh my god, I haven't been here in a while. Uh, we need to make a nether portal. And we somehow need to get loads of orange frogs to go through here. So, uh, will you go to the slime? Is that how it works? Get in, get in the nether. I should probably lower it. No, don't escape. Stop escaping. You're not allowed to leave. Okay, now go into hell. 
Go into hell. Go on, frog. Go into hell. All right, yeah, good. All right, now we need these orange frogs to kill magma cubes. The only problem is there is no magma cubes. Oh, I'm going to be here for a while. All right, yes, there's one here. Uh, we just need to get him to come over here. All right, now I think he's close enough. But we're going to chop him up into little pieces. Yeah, yeah. All right, frogs, where are you? Come on, little guy. Are you hungry? Oh, look at him. He's a hungry boy. All right, now, if I remember correctly, he should eat all of, all of these guys. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Kill them all. Yes. Good. Now I'm just going to do that a few more times. Okay, important moment. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, yeah, that's a lot brighter. All right, as you can see, we now officially have stars in our galaxy. Now I think it's time to move on to the end biomes. And believe it or not, there's actually five different end biomes. And of course, all of them are made from endstone. Oh wait, there's actually six end biomes. We'll start off with the easiest one, the void planet. There it is. Oh wow, it's so beautiful. All right, and now we'll build the end barrens, which is literally just going to be a plain endstone planet. Wow, what an interesting planet. Next up, we have the end Midlands planet, which is the same again, but with some of these things. Wait, we need the actual flower? All right, do we just plant these here like this? And hopefully they should grow by themselves. Yes. Oh my God. Growing so fast. That's that done. Three more end biomes to go. Now we're going to build the small end island biome. And I have a pretty cool idea for this. So we're just going to build the planet normally. Okay, nice. And now we're literally just going to poke loads of little holes in it. All right, yeah, I'm really liking that. That's the small end island biome. The next biome is the end highlands, which is the one that the end city spawn in. Yeah, I'm just going to steal this part. All right, so it's like a normal end biome, but then we'll add a bit of a hill to it and then build part of the end city. Okay, the final end biome is the main island. Okay, so that's the obsidian pillars. And then above it, I want to create kind of like a mini dragon and some stones on his back. Okay, there is a very frightening ender dragon. Then we have our extremely detailed portal. And now we just need end crystals. <laughs> And that's all the end biomes complete. Okay, now it's time to activate grind mode because we've got to get this build finished. I can't wait to remove all these dirt pathways. All right, we've got this, come on. So for the next couple of hours, I grinded, building biome after biome and drinking coffee after coffee to keep me awake until finally the galaxy was complete. But before I reveal it, I just wanna say thank you so much for 1 million subscribers. You guys watching my videos has literally changed my life and I don't know what I'd be doing without you. And I'll be doing a 1 million subscriber special where I'll be releasing something that I've never released before. So make sure you keep your eyes open for that. But anyways, here's my biome galaxy. Thank you so much for watching. Watch this video next.